my unsung hero. Nice, nice, nice. The cutting edge. Yes. Yes, Ras Miguel here. Yes, a different voice from Brother Munta, but see a mind, see a teacher, you know. And we went to the same classroom. I would take in the same lessons from his imperial majesty, Emperor Elia Selassie. So, we will try this journey and know, not hoping, know that at the end of this reasoning, if we have stimulated some thoughts, if we have stimulated our people to move to another level, to become bigger than we have ever been, greater in outlook, mighty in spirit. Man, as his imperial majesty says, search and peruse the pages of history for precedence. But alas, there is none to be found. It's unprecedented. This spirit, this unconquerable tradition that so many set out to conquer, but alas, there's no precedent. And as His Majesty said, now we must aim to become bigger than we have ever been, greater in outlook, mighty in spirit, that we do not owe our allegiance to nations, but instead to the greater international community. So, this is the cutting edge. Sitting in for us, Muta Baruka. And we're going to talk to Muta tonight, you know. Yeah, man, we're going to track him and talk to him tonight. Presently, I understand that he's in Gambia. And from Gambia, I'm planning to go to Senegal. Then I'm going to pass through Ghana. Then I'm going to Ethiopia. So it's a, a little journey, and those are countries that a lot of us came from that part of Africa, where Gambia is today, where Senegal is, where Ghana is. Some of us came from Ethiopia, because there were some that traveled from Ethiopia through the central part of Africa, and some of our ancestors were taken from there too. So by our brother going back there now, rekindling that spirit, realigning with the ancient tradition and with our ancestors, that certainly will bring greater joy, greater knowledge to us. And let us realize how powerful we are as Africans and how great we are as Africans. Many things to talk about tonight, and we're going to make sure we we'll open the phone lines that persons can also call in, give their views, very, very important. Apart from talking to Brother Muta, I know Brother Aika Tafari and Sister Esther, more than likely they are now journeying, traveling to the studio, because we're going to want to reason with them tonight also. They are planning um, as continuing the public relations program for the Coral Gardens Committee. They will be having a panel discussion. It's entitled Outrage Against an Unjust Justice System. Rastafari Coral Gardens Committee and the University of the West Indies, the Western Campus, present continued public education and launch of petition. They'll be launching a petition. At some point, you're going to ask to sign that petition, demanding compensation to Rastafari victims and the Rastafari community for Coral Gardens' atrocity, which took place in 1963. This panel discussion will take place 
on May the 22nd. That's tomorrow at 5 p.m. And this will be at the UWI, the Western Campus. That's in Montego Bay. UWI, Western Campus in Montego Bay. And the main speaker will be Lloyd B. Smith, Member of Parliament and Speaker of the House. Um, or Deputy Speaker of the House, I should say. He will be the main speaker. The panel discussion will include people like um, outstanding brothers. Um, we have Cl Brother Clinton Hutton um, will be one of the main speakers there. Um, Brother Roy Fairclough. It's good to see Nando getting back into his black self. Eddie Ray will also be there. And we have Michael Erskine, the president of the Cornwall Bar Association. He will also be there. And then we have Adrian Freighter to round it off. The moderator will be Nathan Robb. So that will be an outstanding event for many of you over in Montego Bay and the adjoining parishes to take part in. And know this program and the, the other Pan-African programs highlight the Coral Gardens issue strongly within the last couple of years. And I know some people might wonder, are we overdoing it? Are we keep mentioning and highlighting it? And uh, um, what is the objective? What is, are we nearer to the ultimate objective? And I would think so, brothers and sisters. We are certainly much nearer. We have to be patient and understanding in this struggle. And we have to realize that many things that we agitate for, or we demonstrate for, or we fight for, ain't going to come overnight. We are up against um, persons. We are up against structures that resist and resist and resist. And even if we don't get compensation immediately, one thing is certain. They are very cautious that they don't want another coral gardens to take place again. So our efforts are not in vain. And we want to heal up Brother IRV and all the brothers and sisters over there. We had a lovely function of coral gardens in April. Lovely, um, lovely in the sense of presentation and reasoning. The interim or the acting public defender was present and he made it quite clear to the gathering that an interim report regarding the Coral Gardens, one which was substantially carried out by Brother Earl Witter, who has now take leave of the office. And this work is continuing now by the, um, the interim public defender that we have there. And um, an interim report has been prepared. And certainly now, between now and August, we are all hoping to strengthen it, go through it, see if anything has been left out, if anything can be added, and so on before it is then presented to the Parliament and the Parliament um, will discuss it. It will go to the Cabinet and we will see what is the result. So all of this put together, the interim report from the Public Defender's Office, the panel discussions taking place, the discussion which took place in April at the Nyabing Descent and Pit 4 and the other works that are continuously going on, all of this put together, brothers and sisters, will in the long run, as we have said when we present this interim report, if they don't take it serious, then we, and it goes to the cabinet, and they don't take it serious either as a government, then certainly, certainly, then we will, we have already placed it on the international map, but now it will be placed before international tribunals to ensure that Jamaica understands that this 1963 massacre will never disappear. You must atone. And one way of atoning is to seek to pay damages 
so that damages as far as possible to right the wrong that was done. So we're going to be reasoning with Brother Ike and company tonight. They're on their way here. Then we go into a reason we're going to mention now. There is a function on the 24th. That function will be at the St. William Grand Park downtown. It's nice to see downtown getting back into the picture. Um, yes, you know, there's some people trying to almost want to cut off downtown. But nevertheless, Sister Brown Burke, the mayor and company, they will be having the third annual African Liberation Day celebration Saturday, May 24th at the St. William Grand Park downtown. There will be exhibitions, there will be dancing, poetry, singing. The program starts at 2 p.m. So you will have ample time to come out. Um, Mystic Revelation of Rastafari will be there and many other brothers and sisters. Now, as I mentioned, Africa Liberation Day celebration, which this is commemorating. You remember last year? Last year, um, May 24th, May 25th, commemorated the 50th anniversary of the formation of the OAU, Organization of African Unity, which later on, um, became the AU. So last year now was a big thing. Big thing in Ethiopia. Big thing many places to celebrate the 50th anniversary. And no wonder now this year it just whittled back to not much excitement. No. Something like this you got to keep going brothers and sisters. Africa Liberation Day means a lot to I and I. So if on Saturday now you can go down to the St. William Grand Park and join in the celebrations there. Um, we were hoping to speak to someone from the KCC. We understand that the mayor is flying in tonight and the deputy mayor for some reason is phone not waking up. So, but bear it in mind, on Saturday we can all go there. Now, oh, what if things up in Africa, why is he? Boko Haram, eh? Boko Haram over there in Nigeria. And uh, they have kidnapped over 200 schoolgirls. They are holding them as hostages. Um, you know... Boko Haram is an offshoot of, well, Al-Qaeda. Just think of them in that category. They are fundamentalists. They feel that Islam should be preached in a certain way. Now, however, some of the problems with Boko Haram... And I'm not seeking to justify it in any way. Starts more than a hundred years ago, you know. Yeah, man. And some of you need to look up your history, study it. And so you're studying your history, you must have your map of Africa beside you. Because the geography and the history go together. The British, over a hundred years ago, there was northern Nigeria and southern Nigeria. The north was mainly made up of Muslims and the south mainly of Christians. The British chose to push them together in a union of Nigeria without taking into any consideration the geographical aspect, the religious factors, the language factors and many other factors. Them didn't care about that. 
All them care about is who. The North and the South, we British say you must join together. And that's it. That's what happened, you know. And you push them together. And now, sometimes I get the impression that is what Boko Haram is fighting for, that they would want an independent northern part of Nigeria. But they carry the, the action, uh, being the, the manner in which they are carrying it out, leave us to wonder if that is what they really want, if that is what they are pursuing, and so on. But I want you all now to look at the bigger picture. The Americans have offered to help to find these school girls. And you could see the reluctance of the president, good luck Jonathan, who m many people don't really have a high regard for him. But at least he was reluctant to accept these offers. And you must say to yourself, why? Is it slavery coming back in a different form? Because by accepting outside assistance from the U.S. and Britain and so on, them don't just come give you assistance just so you know. What does Nigeria have? Huh? They have the oil. They have many other resources. You know, sir, it's since this Boko Haram business that I, we know here and realize that the Nigerian economy has surpassed the South African economy in terms of build-up and so on. So, it makes me wonder now, all along we never hear the Nigeria economy was moving to that level. You know? So, brothers and sisters, I, I want us watch these things don't just follow what them tell up on cnn and bbc and all of that you know we got to be careful of colonialism all over again then we have the ganja conference yes i just sum it up that way that will start tomorrow 10 o'clock at the university of the west indies specifically over the law faculty the lecture theater over the law faculty. The law faculty is different from the Norman Manley Law School. And that's where it will start tomorrow, 10 o'clock, and run for three days. So you're going to have all sort of ganja talk. We're inviting persons, come out and make your presentation. Say your part, put forth your views, and let us all discuss it and see how best... Um, we can have a serious push towards the legalization of ganja. That's the ultimate goal, brothers and sisters. Just before we take the break, we must congratulate Siba, yes, for winning the Premier League. I know them changed to want to be united, and I noticed them don't play in red, gold, and green no more them play in what blue and is it blue and black or something like that some colors that don't look like black people but so it, it seems to be a deliberate strategy on the Montego Bay people to try to erase the Seba not only the Seba name which is an African name but the Seba image give thanks that them win still you know but we would like to see some restoration because it would be a way of thanking the brothers and sisters who started that club, who carried that club for years and so on. But they played some good football Monday night. I was at the stadium. They played some good football and they seemed hungry for goals. And it was nice to see the thing, you know move to different parts of the island that it will encourage other little youths now to play ball. We're going to take a little break. Soon come forward. You know when I dare we have to deal, we have to play Biko, you know. You all ever wonder how come how come them kill Biko? But them tolerate a Nelson Mandela. You ever wonder? Yeah man. 
you think Biko after 15 or 16 years in a prison would accept a situation where he goes and live at a warder's house where you have swimming pool and all the amenities and leave you at a bedroom in the cell? You think Biko would have accepted that? What, what did Biko tell the judge in court? Biko told the judge and said, look, you whites have ruled my country for a hundred years. I must now rule my country for a hundred years. I the black man. And if after my hundred years, out of that, we can amalgamate and come together, then we will see, but I must get my one hundred years rule. The judge said to him, what do you mean? Supposing you have some, like the judge, I want to imply, suppose he's a fool, fool black man. Because, say, yeah, man, even if he's a fool, fool black man, make him run him country. Yeah, man. And because of those thinking and ideas, and because the children of Soweto, when they marched and shouted that they wanted Biko, and the many organizations throughout the country, they had to kill a Biko, but they could tolerate a more amenable Nelson Mandela, who allowed the mines to continue in the white hands, the lands to continue in the white hands, and so much more. Never forget Steve Biko and the Black Consciousness Movement. Yeah, I know I love for you too. Not just me, it's me. Brick by brick, we will feel up Haiti. The quake, we shake Haiti, we wait. Billions of Haitians with such bravery. I do want yeah. this thing be a fashion thing, you know. With certain things happen and a lot of people just jump on it now and say, Haiti, 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 you know. We have to continuously remember Haiti and we have to continuously work because Haiti liberation is I and I liberation. I and I liberation is Haiti liberation. No make them telling a foolishness about it's true the people that work voodoo and black magic, why they must suffer and why um so much hurricane I lick them and a foolishness that in a brethren. Can I show hate in a no, no murder nobody? Hate in a send out no guns and bombs go kill off my people and all them things like when I say go on a Libya and so. So, brothers and sisters, just like the brothers I'm saying in the song, give it back with francs. The francs, the millions of dollars and French francs that the Haitian people had to pay as reparations. Haiti had to pay reparations to France for liberating themselves. No. If that is not travesty of justice, so black people, we don't have no time for laga laga and discuss things where draw we don't, you know. Those are the things that we are fighting for. So the Haitian people, them don't even reach to start to claim their reparations, which is due to them, you know. They are starting from below zero. They are saying to France, give me back those millions of French francs that we had to pay you under duress. Give me back that alone and my country will start economically and otherwise to improve. Then after I get that now, I go and claim my reparations now for the atrocities that was done when three European powers attack Haiti at the same time. Spain, France, and England. So brothers and sisters, I don't want this to be a fashionable thing where, where there is a earthquake or certain things, we just jump on it and we think constantly, constantly at the United Nations, at the International Court of Justice, at every regional level, we must mention, because that is what will give the people of Haiti the head start that they need to resurrect and grow their country. Allow me to demonstrate the special technique. You know it's who, it's the mighty Jin Su coming through from out of the blue. Yeah, man. We learn lessons, you know, from Haiti, from the struggle. And like the virgins, they mention Toussaint, Alouvature, and Bookman, and all those great people. 
I don't know if many of you know his book, Man Started the Revolution. Really, it is the catalyst. Because a revolution don't just start, so a revolution build up until it reach a crescendo. So that is where Bookman was able to be that 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 catalyst now that brought it to that crescendo. And to Toussaint El Overture dampened it to somewhat. But right now in the studio, me have my family, you know. Yes, man, my family there. Rasaika, blessings. Hi, Welcome, welcome. And we have Bingy Brown. Much I a blessing, my brother. Give thanks. Nice, nice, yeah. nice, yeah. nice. Yeah. We're there, you know? Give nice. Thanks. And I see our sister. I don't know why she stay outside. <laughs> sister but Sandra, sister yes. Sandra. Yeah. So when she's ready, I guess she will come forward. Yes. Yes. Definitely. Give thanks. And I know the item is here now to talk about the Coral Gardens. The item is members of the Coral Gardens Committee. And there is that panel discussion coming up tomorrow, right? Yeah. And so on. And, um, you know, as Rasta, we always have a universal outlook in terms of comprehension of the universe. So consequently, that, that now influences us even when we talk about coral gardens. You know, it's not an isolated incident. No. Because it's 1963 was coral gardens, right? Definitely. And it's 1963, my father set up the OAU. Yes. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yes. The need to, to so, and it wasn't just a convocation of leaders, you know. You have some leaders, whenever I talk to the next leader, you have some leader who was Muslim and not too like Christian. You have some leader for years, him doing two check for your next man over there. So that is, then tell me, say, when you read the, the, the backdrop to it, you know. Their Majesty, you see, the work when they during the day to set it up, they say he did even more work during the night. Because like him, I go to each man hotel room and say, yo, be yourself, man, cut out that and leg out that and I'm going to come back with that tomorrow. And after I tell the leader that, that him, I have to go to the next leader and say, yo, what do you want? Your personal thing or Africa goal? It takes a special synergy, you know, if you can unite Vital. different, different leaders with them, different, different differences. Yes. You know, car, you know, in this time, even our problem today is the fact of the ego. Yes. And if you find a leader where you can rally around and suppress your ego towards a unified cause, is very rare, you know. And His Majesty, being the man of the century, was such a figure, you know, able to can bring together Africa. That's why he's the father of Africa. No, Coral Gardens was April. 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 And Africa, where you was near. near. So you see it. The cosmical energy that was rotating throughout the universe. Yes. 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 You understand? Yeah. And so now, with that taking place now, you can imagine the resistance. And then you have a Buster man to over here now, putting up his resistance. resistance. Yes. <laughs> and to show the Queen of England and others know that him is a perfect soldier. Um, uh, uh, um, slave for them. Mm -hmm. You understand mm -hmm. what I mean? No so therefore, him had to suppress our brothers and sisters now, so that he get commendation and recommendation from the Queen of England and from others throughout to say, nice, you're keeping them in check. Because remember, you know, so many of I and I don't realize that they have always because the Mau Mau, the dreadlock warriors in Kenya in the 1950s coming up now, defeated them so badly in Kenya, the British. Mm -hmm. So now, all along they kept saying, those are the dreadlock warriors over in Jamaica. you got to keep them in check. We cannot afford another defeat. Definitely. Plus you remember that the Maroons had, had them on the run also. Definitely. So you know that kind of that kind of example. You know, if you know, say within Jamaica, the Maroon Revolution. We have precedents. <laughs> exactly. That we can defeat them. So they had that fear. But and that dreadlock warrior will rise up again. No. Make it even worse. And the, the, the fact that you know is not just a physical struggle. They when they struggle with as the image of Rastafari dreadlocks, you know. But it was also the philosophy that goes along with it. The, with, 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 with what the Rastaman dreadlocks are dealing with. Mm -hmm. The black theology, they know thyself, look to Africa concept and all of that. 
um, force them as a, 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 as a new upcoming nation, independence, if you want to suppress that, because that wasn't the direction where colonialism or white supremacy when they try to even portray in the colonies. And with the Rastaman expressing that kind of a, a back to Africa thing, following up on Marcus Garvey and other, 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 other members of the, the faith who, who our forefathers them, they had to suppress that and Carl Gian was a perfect example or an example that give them Creed, I make them think they have credence we could have suppressed the movement because they were doing it before. No? Definitely. Carol Gardens, one could say, was the climax. Well, Car Carol Gardens was the climax. Because the Bedward suppressing, set him up prison, Bellevue, everything. Yep. Leonard Owen, yes. prison him, this, same that, way. that, everything. Yes. And yes. all of those great Back brothers who uh, was brothers will rise up. Yeah. Yes. So you have you have individual cases and you have collective cases. Definitely. If the issue is a collective situation yes. where a whole community got moved same way. Yes. The Bakawal was an ex community got moved same way, yes. same way still, you know. And coming along the way you have individual persons who went through persecution, maybe no button stick and lick but discrimination. So it affected the whole the whole the whole community, Rastafari community, you know, see it that yes. impact upon it, you know. Yes. So, Carol Gian situation for us is a, is a thing where we have to keep alive. Absolutely. You know, and, and, and brethren and sisters over the years has been doing doing that. And we give thanks that I and I can't be able now to play a part, to give it more structure yeah. and more ethos and more, 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 more credibility within its organization right now, still, you know, to the point where we, 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 we're trying to even put on the, um, the forum tomorrow. Leading up to the presentation, as they, I did mention earlier on, with the public defender or the acting public defender in parliament. So we are trying to mount pressure to public education and to a petition. Because if they are remember the same night we, at the commemoration in April when the, I mentioned petition, right away we start going around and kind I noticed of, that I saw the eye immediately, <laughs> even know? before the speech come out of my mouth. I see the eye with the eye paper. And that is what we need. Yes, yeah. The action to continue. Right, okay. yes. yes. So we and, I, and, I, and, I, and I'm pressuring the item too, you know, that out of that reasoning deal, the item must make a video, you know. Yeah. That well, we reasoning need that at the university, night. so now... That was recorded. Yeah. So you need to edit oh. it. Yes. Re -re yeah. Yeah. And for those who wasn't there now, they you can, can yeah. purchase a copy and that money goes towards the work then what they have to do because exactly. take funds to do the work is our next way of raising funds and as you said that too uh, we were we were we were on another station just yesterday and a call a call in a idea that we had same way and said to us that we need to do a play and film the play and can sell the film from the play but do a play uh, for the situation which can develop into a live film because it's a is a is a is a situation we could make a good film yes. Good yes. Film, you know? yes it has action in it it has history in it it yes. has a whole you know the whole background to it could yes. make a good film yes. so if we can find people who is willing to sponsor that because we're a charity organization, so out of these efforts and these situations are the ways where we are trying to find for him can raise funds to assist the elders, you know? So, yes, absolutely, man. Give thanks, give yeah. thanks. Nice. You mean you want to come in? You just said something a while ago. No, no, it's all right. Yeah, man. So, um, for those who are listening, we have Ras Miguel here sitting in for Brother Muta Baruka, but we expect him to call in pretty soon. Because in, in Gambia, we're going to talk about it. I hear you say that them, them, them Muta get our citizenship in, 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 in Zambia, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they must get all the passport and all them. That good man. Well, I tell you, I, 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 I love when they come to Jamaica and just dash with the Jamaica passport. <laughs> I don't know where they call him and he showed some more passports. Yeah, I stand on the surprise. I said, 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 like I said, now, we, we give the Coral Gardens the international perspective that a people rise up, were constantly suppressed, but the more them press us down, is the more we seem to be rising more. Surely. And so on. From the 1930s, come right up, 1940s, the different incidents that took place. And like we said, now it reached a climax with Coral Gardens 
and this is why coral gardens so when we say coral gardens brothers and sisters we're not just isolating that event of 1963 that bad friday bad thursday bad saturday and so on you know what we're saying is that this was the, 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 the coral gardens also has become now a symbol yes exactly yeah of the oppression that was unleashed by a government the level of oppression it reads genocidal against its own people mm-hmm. yeah but you see those were proudly people. proudly no was the man to say proudly no who the jail can hold boom can hold, can hold can. which is the cemetery t- yes yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, man. So they were they, 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 and there was a statement from Norman Manley too. I don't remember it correctly. To earlier on, Fisher sure said they were definitely against the, the, the spread of Rastafari within the whole Jamaican society. See, we still, you know. Yeah, man. So yeah, man. we we know we know say mm-hmm. the Carol Gian Christian was uh, excused because some brethren um committed murder attack or really take revenge and did some act of violence mm-hmm. that they returned the violence upon the upon 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 the well you know you know you know uh, all the while bridge in a port uh, uh, what that is in Catherine so you understand their class you know, you know, understand for them concept of justice <laughs> man, man never yet got one take of me no no and no 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 yeah, yeah, GLOs. So we don't understand for them concept of justice. That's why we are so outraged against the, uh, the the unjust justice system that we see that take place right now, and it um, in a in a in a different genres, different situation to the point where we can look upon the system and say it is not perpetuating justice. And for our uh, uh, freedom, justice has to be involved. You no. can't have freedom without justice. No. You can't have no better sense to get freedom and you know, justice. justice. Yeah, yeah, good governance can come, government can come without, without justice to its people. Yes. You know, so we are hoping that we can put the conscience of uh, 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 the, uh, the, uh, the leaders them at this moment in time. You know, see, it's a pinnacle just there that they had a, had a, had a crescendo, had a, had a, high, a hype in its deliberation, same mm-hmm. way. So we hope that Carl Gann may get that kind of hype, same way still. You know, see, and when we say hype, we don't mean no, no, no. Dance all right. We the talk. No, one day, wonder. No, we did a serious, concentrative, concentrated effort towards attaining compensation in whatever way. And we know you're a figure from maybe even the high as a legal mind or mm-hmm. someone where even they, um, they, they, they deal with the process, a figure of, of, of how much of a compensation we don't get, even though we think about compensation more than just monetary compensation still. But I'm, I'm thinking that if you're asking for compensation, there must be some figure. Of course. At some point, um, we will have to sit down and work it out. Because there are formulas to work out damages, you know. Yeah. It just comes in like um, if a car lick down a man and so on. The doctor gives you a medical report and the doctor says, look, the man is 10% disabled. We have guidelines within law books and damages and cases to say when a man is 10% disabled and he is 45 years old and he has five children dependent, consequently he is entitled to such and such. Of course, you know, if you look at a man where a pushy man cat is a different compensation for if you look at a doctor. Because mm-hmm. you have to compensate the doctor for the time that he's unable to work. And if, him, if he's not able to ever resume his work, you have what is called future, loss of future earnings. Mm. So there are formulas that we can use to work out the coral gardens aspect too. Okay, to yeah. say, well then, um, first of all, we look at the amount of ones that was involved, that was brutalized and yes, so on. Yes. And, and I've always said, because when you kill a brethren, you know, what about his children who... Who, if that him. brethren know was around, he would have worked, send his children to school, send them to university. They know would be able to come and have their children and would be at a d- better standard to take care of those children who would be the brethren grandchildren. Yes, yes. So it isn't just, you just kill a brethren, you know. You no. kill more than just him. Many scenes. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes. So you have to work out the compensation along those lines too. I, and, because and many of our children end up wondering, or you know, you understand what I mean? Yes, no, but one of the main things the government could do, you know, yes. is offer land, you know. 
as part of the compensation as part of the package. Compens that yes, would be the community. Then what, what you should realize is that the situation with Rudolph Franklin you know, was a, and a situation on account of land. You know. Yes, it started as it a result started of land. land you know, yes. Because in the documentary, there was a policeman who was saying that why when when we go to go dig up the man things, mm -hmm. the amount of good melon and pumpkin that we see and we have to use bulldozers and destroy them. It, 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 it was disgraceful. It must be in anybody else yes. know you work well, because so hard and a man bring bulldozer come go through your field. Yes. Imagine a, 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 and a, even, a even though even though I was doing the work, you know, he regret it. Yes. But him say my for doing work. Ah does. Yes, because him get harder than the higher superior. No, but get land, right? Land has to be developed. Land has to be developed. So if we, land if we could get be. land enough land to develop a village. For the right. Rasta community, we can't get um, hospital, mm -hmm. we can't get health center, schools, schools mm -hmm. and etc. We can start from there. But we would need some amount of machinery. Definitely yeah, so. You know, the days of pickaxe and fork. That don't right? That don't just a little <laughs> one acre when you have a little one acre in your backyard. Yeah, yeah. Definitely but so. We are talking thousands of acres of land. Definitely. So we're going to need machinery, mm -hmm. good machinery, to plow the land and prepare the land and so on. Mm -hmm. Then nowadays, now you have all sort of irrigation type water system. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That can make your land produce. Ten times the yield. Greenhouse technology. Yeah, greenhouse yes. technology. Yeah, yes. all the thing. So we don't want those government ministers who are listening for say well tomorrow morning when we got reason or say well we can just give them um, couple, and, couple, and yes and couple so thousand acres of land, land. and, 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 cool and kill everything. No, no, no. no. <laughs> we so, need, so we, need, we need equipment too. Yes. So mm -hmm. in other words, this aspect of the reparation would be like a community or the communal reparation because the whole community, you know, away from the individual victims were displaced and 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 and, and got affected from the Caribbean situation. So why do you look on the individual victims and their families who got brutalized and hurt and say give them physical money compensation towards the community you now we could get like what we just said out oh, yes definitely yes so yes so we want them to understand that is a is a serious thing and we're going to calculate it and we're going to work it out and ensure that that amount of justice come to an eye so and that is full. yes that we are put in a position that um, the community so, benefits and yes be, be, benefit in a real way really mm -hmm. yes so those are four brothers and sisters whose roof leak when rain fall and literally don't have a proper dwelling he and she will have to be placed in a proper situation Definitely. because you help set back the situation <laughs> and also why I keep saying coral guard is a climax is that from way back from the 1920s and 30s, you know, the different oligarchies in Jamaica schooled the people to be hostile against Rastafari. Uh, yes, yes. Just imagine an article in the newspaper which says, in the Gleaner article came out of the Gleaner, which says, we must congratulate those of higher intelligence who trim and shave these deluded creatures. Yeah. Bridgwin. So like white I'm supremacy. Slavery. Man. <laughs> I tell you. That are Willie Lynch behavior. Yes, you know? exactly. And you to are congratulating people who break the law. Exactly. Yes. Send them on an unjust mission. Yes. And can you imagine the policeman who said that they had put that Rastafari figures as a shooting range? Yes. As, as, yes. as target, 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 target practice. So you, you, you psychologize the people's minds. To eat Rasta. Yes. And those in uniform hated us even more now. Yes. So even when a little Rasta child turn up at school, the teacher so much see him as a little outcast that dismiss him right now. Children by the Mark Fiend paper when him hand it up and all of that. Uh, you, you understand the yeah, yeah, yeah. brothers and sisters? So, so, so that is what that is what coral gardens represent mm -hmm. and i and i sitting here now represent the sweet victory you see 
yes. over good over evil. You yes. understand? Yes. Yes. say right about now to where we stand and what happened in them past time that we today. Yes. Can they attest to certain things and know say we are the victory of good over evil? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So we're going to take a little break now. So brothers and sisters, the voices you are hearing, Bingy Brown. And we are fortunate and honored to our brother Ike Tafara here. These are brothers who are part of the Coral Gardens Committee. Um, they are based over in Montego Bay, but like we say, Coral Gardens International. So wherever you are, we can get in touch with them and show our support, show our strength to ensure that just compensation take place and that the government show that it is penitent that the government atone for its crime and its sins and that they make sure they give a pledge that this will never happen again take a break now soon come forward IRFM Labor Day Spotlight will be on Tacky High School this Friday. The People's Station IRFM join the St. Mary community, the Tacky High School family and corporate Jamaica as we start the rebuilding process at the school which was affected by a devastating fire on May 5. Grab your lap, pickaxe, fork, shovel, paintbrush, broom and come let's show our community spirit. No, Baramuta, we have been trying to reach you. I mean, we're listening, and um, you know, sometimes them wires and things crisscross. So, if the eye can call us, that would be enough love. We have been trying to call you, but we're not getting through. So, if the eye can call us, please do. Also, to let her. Brothers and sisters listening, no, we also later on will be trying to speak to Sister Desta. Sister Desta and many of you who have been following would know that there is a um, serious exhibition that will be taking place in Ethiopia later on this month. And this exhibition features the works of Emperor Haile Selassie. Now, Many people might wonder and say, well, we're making a big thing around that. Well, brothers and sisters, this is a big, big thing that those sisters and brothers in Ethiopia now able to achieve that. And let me tell you why I say so. You see, in about 1978, when I went to Ethiopia, Brother Aika, yes, and when I landed you know, up, and I go meet some brethren and sisters, you know, the first thing them tell me, they say, me, you might have to take off about now, you know. It's the button we have on, is in pure, man. You might have to take it off, you know, man dead for less than that on you, you know. <laughs> so I <me> say, eee, <coughs> So when me do the next day, you know, me put on two. <laughs> <laughs> one pan the left press and one pan the right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I said, brave me, brave, you know. Oh, boy, you got to read that, you got to read that, Yes. <laughs> you know. But seriously, people were killed, Ethiopians were killed for just showing any form of loyalty to his imperial majesty. But that is what 63 did and the loyalty that we had to yes. the Rastafari culture, you know. Yes. Black theology, why we suffered, suffered this the Coral Gardens incident. Yes. Yes. So, this is 78, you know, 1978, you know. We're not just Rastafarians in Ethiopia, but Ethiopians themselves were being executed for showing any form of loyalty to Haile Selassie. Mm -hmm. So I give you that backdrop and build up now to reach a stage in 2014 that you can actually have a big public exhibition of Haile Selassie. Those brothers and sisters there must be highly commended. You, you and, saw me? Yes, yes. I listen to last night and the Rastafari movement. Yes. You know, so we're going to talk to Sister Desta and bring out some more of that. I want to heal up Sister Mitzi. Yes. I really Our give thanks. Great sister and dear Sister Mitzi. Stand and strong in life. Yes, I will want her to be stronger, you know, and to move forward. I want to heal up Rasaivai also. I really yes. He I made a little missing in action at the moment, and I've seen him as vig vigilant, you know, and That's so on. That's visible, but he's not missing. He's not missing, but he's <laughs> a Rasaivai and family. So, 
I know it's been nice if him just come out to the next CD now yeah. and show say he has been recording and so on because I know him always writing, you know. Rasai, I always writing. You know, el eloquent brethren, man. Yeah, man, I'm always writing. I know him always writing because I know when I book him up, I'm going show me some people and say, Ras Miguel, I write something upon this and so on, you know. I'm always doing some research and writing and so on. So, who want to heal up Rasai and family? and make the brothers and sisters know stay strong and as we move forward. Now, so the Coral Gardens, um, this, this, well, for those people, some people go sleep and wake up now for listen to the program. Tell them a little more about it now, Brother Aika. What, you, you mentioned the plans of having this, um, let us call it, this panel discussion tomorrow. At the Western Campus of the University of the West Indies, yes, and um, the highlight some of the speakers that will be there now for us. Well, we have speakers such as um, Clinton Houghton, which you know associated with the university and is a very highly recommended historian. Yes, yes, him know all about the history of that take place and rifle right crop is a. Lie down in a man to go be a very radical brethren, yes. you, you know. Yes. Um, we don't see a lot of him, so it, it was nice, like you said, if you see him join this discussion for us still, that, that was good for us. Uh, we are first man, which mm -hmm. first man now is, is from the indigenous village, Rastafari village, is a part of the Rasta community, which will be on the panel, CM, you mm -hmm. know. Michael Erskine is the bridging where um is the president for the Carnival Bar Association, so he's an ex legal mind that same way. And Adrian Freighter now is a is a reporter within the Gleaner. So we, we kinda have the publicists and the legal minds together. Different. With Nathaniel Rabno, Nathan Rabno is a near legal mind and he's the moderator. He he did one for us, um on the fiftieth commemoration we had a a, a, a a panel discussion and Carl Gian to and he was the moderator. So he did a good job and we have him back here now. So Light B. Smith is the main speaker, which is the you know, MP for the area and all that. So what we try to do with this panel is we try to get out people from the society, basically. If you see how their mind within justice towards I and I is 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 functioning, you know. Cause we go and talk to people in Parliament that are mostly non Rastafari. So these people now supposed to can show them say justice is justice. It doesn't have no colour or no shape and form. So mm -hmm. these are the panelists that we hope we have and we, and guarantee we're going to have a very interesting reasoning, reasoning going through yes. with the, with them, you know? Yes. Nice. Yes. And and, and and in 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 the same in the same speed after all of that now we're going to have like the launch you know, for the petition which will be launched online also as well as the hard copy to sign, you know? And this situation now um, is a situation that we're trying to go wide with it, island wide, as into as much area as possible. We have a next date set for the 26th of, of June for Hanover Parish Library coming up same mm -hmm. way. And we are hoping that other ones who are interested to um, to facilitate a, 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 a panel discussion or forum or speakers within mm -hmm. their their community towards public education of the Caribbean situation and the signing of the petition will call us, you know, or make contact with us so we can organize with them, you know. We want the one in Kingston, me and the shot the same way, you know. The whole uh, idea to sensitize people. Yes. Educate. Educate. Inform. Inform, yes. Update. Exactly. On the whole thing. Yes. So one in Kingston, pretty soon Manchester, Portland, yes. all over the island. Yes. yes. And so on. As wide as we can go in this space yes. of time to, 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 to August, you know? Yes. And then also to August. get the signatures of ones and ones from the petition to present to Parliament the same way. Nice. But I can well hold that. Just a little dear now, I understand we have Sister Desta on the line. Uh, greetings, Sister Desta. Greetings, perfect love from Addis Ababa. <laughs> Yes, G greetings, Sister Desta. Yes, thanks. Yes, thanks. Can you hear me? Yes, I'm hearing you now. I'm hearing you now. I'm hearing. Yes. Yes, thanks. Yes, thanks. I, I yes, just. Yes, thanks. thanks from Addis Ababa. Yes. I gave our listeners a little overview that to have reached this level, to have an exhibition on Haile Selassie, 
is monumental and it, it must have taken great work and courage to reach this level. Yeah, is able and he gets all the glory because you know it's a man man plan and the wipe out. So indeed, it has been an amazing journey, almost four years, and many angels have come. Some does did great work, some did small work, but it all contributed to what will happen on on Sunday for African Liberation Day at the National Museum. You know. Yes. Give us an idea what this exhibition. Some of us who might not be there. You know, but we want to picture it. What what will you have on display? Well, it, it, it's really phenomenal. And yesterday we were at the museum for 12 hours. We left there almost midnight last night. And Queen Mother Moses came in and has been giving a great strength along with the UK committee. But essentially when one enters this museum, which is the National Museum of Ethiopia, and also the place where Lucy in Dinknesh, the mother then of, of humanity, is located, in this home, the former home of Prince Makonen, who was his majesty's grandson, it has been converted into a temporary museum. So we've been able to find beautiful artwork that has never been shown publicly because it was in the majesty's private collection and taken from the palace by the Derg and sent to the museum shortly after the coup 40 years ago. Well, in this collection, there are amazing paintings done by brilliant Ethiopian artists from as early as 1933 to 1961. And we found a Mortimer planner piece in the collection named Christ in Black and what? White. So that's the new seeing everything. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So these pieces, again, phenomenal paintings. And we also were able to access and utilize some of his clothing, military clothing that we're familiar um, with, with many pictures that we've seen him in the Navy uniform, his um, field marshal uniform with hats, his grand ceremonial cape embroidered in gold um, and red velvet. The, the piece weighs maybe about um, maybe 25 pounds, you know, um, Empress Menin's coat and then two of their common throne chairs, which are not so common. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and then we've got the other section because it's a very huge um, facility. And so we have another section committed to the cultural expression of the Rastafari movement. So there we've been able to access some rare original Daniel Hartman prints mm -hmm. from Ras Michael uh, McCullough's collection. We've got also several leading Ethiopian artists, contemporary artists who have been commissioned to do several pieces. Um, we've got four large 55 inch screen televisions in four of the rooms that will show the music of um, Bob Marley, Peter Tosh, Count Ozzy, the forerunners that really help to, you know, disperse the message of Rastafari. Finally, we've got a section that deals specifically with the three major mansions, the Nabingi, Bobo Shanti, and the 12 tribes of Israel and their founders with an installation of what the Jamaica culture yard looks like. You know, um, one additional thing I should have mentioned to that we have that's very important because it's a very dynamic exhibition and the intent is, con is to connect what I call kit and kin and to have Africans, especially Ethiopians, understand why we are here and why we connect to Ethiopia. So we have done a small installation of the slave ship called the Door of No Return, mm. where you enter and in that moment, it's just a three minute video clip that shows you, brings you into that experience, that horrific experience that we endured, that has since been burning our video clip that shows you, brings you into that experience, that horrific experience that we endured that has since been burning our blood to get home to Africa. And then when you come out of that experience, the slave ship you're led straight into the Marcus Garvey Starliner, Black Starliner, our salvation ship, if you will. So, again, really dynamic. The UK committee is in. They've done the whole bath experience and the development of Rastafari in the UK. Mexico has done the same. So we're just bubbling, 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 but quite tired. <laughs> uh, very, very good. Now, for years, Sister Desta, 
the Ethiopian intelligentsia have made great effort to downplay the role of His Imperial Majesty towards the upliftment of Africa, the unity of Africa, and uh, the blessings with the diaspora. This exhibition then must go a long way to show in this intelligence here that your efforts were in vain. Well, you know, I look at it this way because first of all, we've been able to access all these items because of the support of the Ministry of Culture and even the Ministry of um, Foreign Affairs has been facilitating visas from one coming from, from all over because as you know, we still have issues going from one country to the next on our continent. Yes. So uh, the way I analyze this thing, I see this as our responsibility. Politics is politics, and any politician in any setting is always hindered or hampered or tie hand tied with what they can actually do, regardless of what they may feel within their spirit. And to them it is sensitive. But I and I as Rastafari, we have the power, the authority, and the spirituality within which to manifest these types of works. Because who, hel who else has held up the Majesty's name from that time till this time? So I really look at this as our responsibility, and I look at this as an opportunity for us to realize the power that we have through the Divine Majesty to fulfill works that not only promote the majesty, the living God, but also help to perpetuate a message, a Pan-African message that is good for everyone. It doesn't matter whether you're Rastafari or not, but Pan-Africanism and the ideas and the principles of developing this continent by us, for us, are alive. They're living. And so this is one of the outputs that we want to make sure is achieved through this exhibition that the 75% of Africans under the age of 35 can find again this guiding um, principle that has led us out of mental slavery. So likewise, you know, this is not a job for politicians. Right. <laughs> you know, it's right. really Sister not Desta, a job for politicians. I'm going to ask you to hold just a minute there now. It's um, coming up to 12 o'clock. And at 12 o'clock, the principles of this station is that we play the national anthem. So I'm just going to ask you to hold a little, and we're going to come right back to you. Give thanks. Yeah, man. Nice. Yes, Sister Desta, we're back on here again now. Yes. Yes, it, it, beloved. Yes. yes. Give thanks. So, no. yes, this, 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 this work is really powerful, and there are so many dynamic aspects to it and what we did with the biographical part of the majesty we pulled it directly from his own biography his own words so nothing is left to interpretation on our side before we place it in there it's all again his words likewise the marcus Garvey section um you know it, it, it's from his own words what they feel what they express what their aspirations are for africa you know, you know what so I. Really get that. We really get that. One of the things I found out, even when I spoke to former government ministers and the persons who were in leadership position, was that many of them did not know of a lot of the outstanding works that His Majesty carried out, um, especially outside of Ethiopia. For example, his agitation and work whilst he was in England. Um, court cases against cable and wireless to recover funds to send to Ethiopia for the Liberation Army. Things of that nature. Um, many of the things that he went through. Many of the Ethiopians did not know of this. And I would imagine that the exhibition... The pardon? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, I would imagine that... The, 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 even internally. Even internally, many of them. Right. So the exhibition now will even go a far way in educating Ethiopians about His Imperial Majesty. Is that so? Yes. Yes. And this, this is who our market 
um, is in terms of this exhibition. You know, when you're creating any product, exhibition, glass, clothing, you have to think about who this particular thing is created for. And this exhibition is clearly for Ethiopians and, and going further Africans because it's going to Ghana next year. It won't leave the continent. And so, you know, to, to but, buttress your point, many in even the Ministry of Foreign Affairs that I spoke with in the diaspora office had no idea that Sheshamani Langwa was associated with the support that black people in the West gave during the Italian occupation. They thought that Majesty, when he went to Jamaica, gave this land for Rastafarians. So there really is, as you're saying, Brother Miguel, a really important role in educating and clarifying who we are, who the majesty is, his impact, and most of all, the continuity, because this is not a museum or an experience, rather, that, okay, it's in the past, it's historic. No, it's alive, and we want to build, you know, on the philosophies and the work that the majesty has done, and likewise, the movement. And this is why even the Shashamani component, which will happen from May the 29th to June the 1st, is quite specific to the Shashamani experience. And I didn't even know, through our research, we found out that it was actually Emperor Menelik II that started land grant to the African diaspora. And the majesty fulfilled it when he came back from Italy, from Ethiopia, I mean, sorry, from England in, in, um, in exile. Beautiful. I also want to take this opportunity to cran congratulate that foresight in thinking of bringing that aspect to the exhibition of, of slavery. Because to us here in Jamaica, we might take that for granted that any African, Pan-African exhibition must um, embody slavery. But as you would know, Sister Desta, the Ethiopians do not know slavery. They never experienced it. And therefore, bringing that in the exhibition, I would really like to congratulate you all for that foresight and, and thinking. Thanks again. And again, we have to connect the dots. Sometimes it's easy for us to sort of criticize why someone doesn't understand or embrace us. But I have found in living here now for almost nine years, it's about really, we have a duty. And this is something we as Rasta always did. I remember Bongo time, you know, Nadine the High Priest back in the days, Rasta Bona Jeez, they went around and shared the word, you know. And now we have even greater access or platform to share the word through the internet, social media, all these different things. So this is a critical link in having Ethiopians in particular, as you say, who have not experienced. And I would defer, I would say, the transatlantic slave trade experience, because they did experience slavery. Uh, yeah, right. It yes. was not no. of the, of the trans yes. gain of mm -hmm. level that we went through, you know. And so they have no connection, no understanding. So this visceral um, experience that they will have when they duck down and go into this small area and see and hear those whips and the chains and the moaning and this thing, we're hoping that that three-minute experience will help to sensitize them and understand why, why this, what I call our genetic memory and our spiritual compass has never failed in bringing us home in the spirit of repatriation. Absolutely. And then now the plans to have this as a traveling exhibition, wow, to take it across to other African countries um, is, is really great thinking. And you know, what we love about this is that the panels that we are creating are in English and Amharic. So in every African country, we will also be doing Amharic workshops. Mm -hmm. You know, and as you know, Amharic is the only African language that has its own fidel or um, alphabetical base. Because even Kiswahili, as widely as it is spoken, it is still using the, you know, the um, English or the, the, the Latin, if you know, the letters, A, A to B, the alphabet. Mm -hmm. So we are just, I'm telling you, 
excited, exhausted, yes, but very, very thrilled about the opportunities. And I am praying that we as a community, um, Rastafari, yes, but more importantly, we as Africans can really overstand and get the message from this, which is a message of solidarity and a message akin to the Sankofa that even if you're not repatriating physically, look back, think about Africa. This is our route. You cannot deny where you are because then what sort of food will you be, you know? So for us, this is really significant. It is also very important to kind of go back to what you said about some of the discussions. And I know that you've been very, very involved over the years in trying to make sure that we are reintegrated on the continent. But we feel that this is going to, you know, ratchet up those efforts Mm -hmm. and discussions. And already we're beginning to have that sort of response from ones in, in government. All right. Tell me now, just to let our listeners know, this exhibition runs from when to when? It runs from May the 25th, which is mm-hmm. on Sunday, mm-hmm. through June the 25th. Um, we're waiting to see if it will be extended until the Majesty's Earth Strong on July 23rd, but it depends on the response. And already people are lining up in front of the museum just to take pictures of the five-meter-high billboard that was erected with the Majesty and Empress Menin at the top, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so that is the intent. Um, Brother Jelani is coming in, or I think he may have even arrived last night to do the symposium on Saturday. So we've got um, professors and presenters from all over that are coming in um, on Saturday to present. So there's a lot of um, activities going on. There's even tours up to Ejessa Goro, the birthplace of the Majesty, and Harar. So there's really a lot, and we want to just encourage everyone to come in tune in, think about us. You know, Ethiopia is real. This is not just um, the mythical land of Presta John, but it's a real place, and Africa awaits our creators. Beautiful. Our spirits and prayers and our minds are with you, Sister Desta, and your team and company. Heal all ones that are there. We are very, very, it's not just a, just a proudness. It is almost a feeling of um, that the, oh, it's it's almost like the this is a journey which is destined by our ancestors through all of us, and that it just like it is said, Africa waits its creators, and the creators have now come to literally. We don't want to sound chauvinistic to say we're teaching the Africans, but certainly we are bringing the uh, Africans to realize how great a people we are. Amen, amen. And, and, and I take that with such a great sense of humility, Brother Miguel, um, coming from you. You know, we were a long time in the movement and, you know, you've done so much so you understand your fingers are on the pulse at home and abroad. And I think what you're saying is absolutely right and there's nothing wrong with the children returning home to teach. I, as a mother of 10, you have your your lot there, your dozen plus, <laughs> and constantly our children are teaching us. So I don't think that there's anything negative about that statement or condescending at all. And I think, again, we have a duty, we have a role, we have a, you know, this amazing responsibility on our shoulders to indeed come home and share because, you know, sharing is caring, as I say, in, in its most simple form. This is what we even teach our children. So why not? Why not come home and help to indeed build and develop, especially the minds of the youth on the continent that are thirsty. They're, they're longing for this focal point. They're longing for messages that help to galvanize and strengthen them. And we know within Rastafari that we have found this message so we pray to the most high to just guide us you know and um i hope you'll be able to make it in if not this time then maybe the ghana leg i i certainly will be there at some point i certainly have to be there nice give thanks sister desta and um heal all ones fire and i keep up the great works and uh, we know that um generations upon generations to come will will be thankful for these efforts 
I'm a Fedinalo. Thank you so much and thanks to Jamaica, our incubator that really played an important and mighty role in preserving our souls so that we could make it home. Give thanks. Blessings, my sister. Hairy. Nice. Uh, I love Every time. Her. Black. Nice. Now, um, brothers and sisters, we really give thanks for that reasoning. Yeah, Brother Ike and Bingy. Um, huh? Yes, we really, really give thanks. Nice. All right. From Sister Desta in Ethiopia, we move to Brother Muta online in Gambia. We now have Muta online. Yes. Greetings. Hello, Muta. The blessed one. Isis, 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 Isis. Nice. Me you say get passport, brethren? <laughs> the, well, the program is so international from Ethiopia to, uh, to Gambia. I mean, God, nice man. Yeah, man. Give thanks, brother. Give thanks. Yeah, man. So the running yeah, in Gambia. Well, we some work from a different from where we came to do. You know, we decided that you know we have to get political down here. So <laughs> yes. we um, we're actually making some headways into a long-standing problem that we had, and it is visa, a visa issue. You know. Yes. Um, the, at the launch of the 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 the, the roots festival, I you know there was a roots festival here. You know, a lot of people from all over the world. Really? Um, to celebrate, you know, and what I know is that I, they, they, um, they asked me and Gavi, Marcus Gavi, son, which is Julius Gavi, to speak. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I spoke, and you know, I have to start now speak something very of interest to me. So we talk, I, I spoke about the the idea that um, Yaya, which is the president, he actually moved the 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 Gambia out of the Commonwealth. Yes. You know, yes. guy was saying that it don't make any, it is not relevant. And his country is not getting yeah. a benefit. Yeah, he's, he actually has a bookmark, a million and one reason why I had to move the Gambia out of, um, uh, out of the Commonwealth. Yes. So, when I spoke and I said, well, no, yeah, yeah, move his country out of the Commonwealth. We, Jamaican, still in the Commonwealth. But the problem with it is that Jamaicans, even though we are members of the Commonwealth, we have to have a visa to go to Britain, which is really a big problem because if you are a member of the Commonwealth, and have to have a visa because you are seen as a British subject. But Jamaica, no, I, hold on, Muta, Jamaica, eh? Jamaica is even worse because our final court of appeal is the Privy Council in England. Britain. So, so, Britain, uh, yes. so, yes. so if a man have a but right this, and want to go to the Privy Council, he has to get a visa. To go exercise his right of appeal. It's yes, absolutely uh, ridiculous. The yes. That is a total contradiction in itself. Yes. Now, I then now look at the Gambia situation and I'm saying, now, here's the next contradiction. That here is Gambia. This is Africa. This is where we came from. And we have to have a visa to come home, but we didn't get a visa to go over there. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's it kind of contradictory that Gambia is not a part of the Commonwealth, but Gambia is maintaining a British colonial system that says that her children has to get a visa to come home. And I'm saying that, I'm saying to them that it, 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 when you land in Africa, it's a welcome home. And this, stuff, this is like a symbolism that it, it's just words because Oh, you can be welcome in me home and then tell me that before I reach home, I have to carry my passport to Britain or America to get it stamped with a visa to come home. Anyway, what happened is that it took on steam because all the newspapers from here to Senegal took it up, you know, the headlines, you know, the paper, television, everybody took it up. And then later on, I asked for a, a, a request a meeting with the president. Well, yesterday, Yesterday we got a meeting with the president, the, the, the vice president, which is a female, and the, the minister of um, um, tourism and culture, which is also a female. We had a meeting very short because I didn't want to have too long. I just come to tell them exactly what I said. I repeated what I said at the 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 the, 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 the festival, uh -huh. and they agreed. They, they, they agree with me, and the minister of culture said yes because. 
we have opening for people from Europe that, do, that come to Gambia without visa. And I'm saying to her, yeah, but that is Europe. We're talking about something that is closer to Gambia now. We're talking about the descendants of slaves who desire to come back. And there's a lot of Jamaicans living here from England. I don't know. How, I didn't know that some of Jamaicans were living here. And not rats to me that Jamaicans who leave leave England and desire to come to Africa and they come into Gambia and build up themselves. Anyway, they agree with me and say they're going to change the law. They're going to change it. They're going to say, yeah, they're going to, you know, all the things is good. So I'm saying, yeah, it is, it is good that Jamaicans and people in the Caribbean should not need or require a visa to come to Gambia. And they said, yes. They gave me their word that they will do something about it. Um, the, 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 the Minister of Culture, he says, yes, she recognized the importance of this, the psychological significance of it. And the Vice President says, yes, they will do that. So I have a commitment from them that they will eventually do it. I asked them if it's going to take 50 years or uh, 20 years. The lady said, no, it's not going to take so long, maybe 50 days. All right. Now, I know why I stay with politicians. I don't matter which politician tell me these things. If she said 50 days, I say, all right, it's 50 days. Well, we will see. So that is where I left it. Now, the argument about the, the, the passport is that they, they, they are very not, they, they're nice. They are always welcoming home. And I think they suggested that Everyone who came from Jamaica should actually get a passport to be a citizen of Gambia. And I think a lot, some of the citizens, musicians, and some of the guests who came from Jamaica actually um, made an effort to get the visa, to get the, the, the passport. Yes. Well, when I went to the, the culture now, she said she's going to give me a passport to make me a citizen of Gambia so that I can travel through Africa without a visa. Because if I have a Gambian passport, I will be able to travel all over Africa without a visa. And I welcome that. They took my, and uh, we signed up the farm, which other musicians did sign up them farm, and they took my picture, and I went to take the picture. So I am waiting on them now to, to tell me exactly which I, when I will get the passport. And they, I, I was leaving on Saturday, and she said to me that I can't leave because the, the president on Sunday, which is African Liberation Day, is his birthday. And his birthday means that I have to stay. I have to stay for the, 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 the birthday. I, well, you know, I don't tell everybody, say, I come back. I call Jackie, and I say, Jack. I mean, wait, talk to the Minister of Culture here yeah, because she will have stay, you know, till the next time. When they talk and talk, and the consensus between the two women them was that, yes, if I desire to stay, stay for the birthday and come, come back next week. So that is where it is now. I am, I am here in Gambia for the past two weeks. I went to Senegal the day before yesterday. I came back from Senegal. We did two shows in Senegal to come back. Sizzla is still here, Sizzla is making the round, Sizzla will be at the, um, at the, at the, 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 the yeah. ceremony to, for the, pre the president, and that's where it's at, at the moment. Tell us now, um, the, the, has there been any effects on, on Senegal that you have gone to and Gambia as to what is happening in Nigeria with regards to Boko Haram? All right. <coughs> There's a big issue down here. Um, the, 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 the Gambian, well, somebody I was speaking to some of the, the, the inner people in the government and the people here, I think they feel that the president of Nigeria is not really doing a good job. It, it, it's weird that they should bring in America into the situation when they should be the ones who deal with this, this force in itself. You know, people don't know still, but Boko Haram, it actually means Western education is a thing. Mm -hmm. That's what the word means, Boko Haram. Yes. Um, 
It means Western education is that thing. Yeah. So these people is fighting against Western education. We, we in Jamaica, as well, that is fighting against Western education. But what they are doing, you know, they are using the religion to get so extreme that they are killing their own people in order to project this idea of no Western religion. So they have become a menace. Yesterday they killed about 100 odd people. And yet, um, this month, today they, they kill like 70 other people in a market, they set the bomb. So this, 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 this is a very serious concern in this part of the world here about that group and about the, the lack of enthusiasm or the lack of um, push by the Nigerian president to really, to, to, to get rid of this group. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and and, and what, what, what is that? What, what, I don't know because, it, because I am coming from Jamaica, but it is really strange. Every day I take up a newspaper, the only thing that is on my mind to find in a newspaper is a murder. This is a psychological thing. I am coming from Jamaica, murder is prevalent in Jamaica, so I am expecting to see who get murdered in Gambia. I am telling you that since I've seen here, there's no murder. And when I contact the police, the, 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 the police and the ministers, I am told that murder, there's only five murders per year in Gambia. Five. Zero five murders per year. And Miguel, let me tell you something. It is so, I mean, it's so sweet that the police here don't carry guns. They don't carry guns in the street when they're dealing with the people. And that is really something else for a Jamaica, like we said, to actually see this. Mm -hmm. It's really the old in, in its own self. That here in a country where you have five murders per year. I, 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 I did a free call to them tell me that. And you, you, you're traveling with police. Because every day we have police guarding us. Me and Sizzla, anywhere we go, there's police all over and soldiers. We can't walk on the street. Because, you know, it's a mob. It's mob business if we walk on the street. And these police line up. And none of them have any gun. I will have to ask the police them, so how come they don't carry any gun? Because they only carry a gun when they're going on a special mission. But normally, they don't carry guns. And that is really something. That is really something. Yes. We, are, we are taught and believe that everywhere in Africa, you know, there's a war. And everywhere in Africa, there's brutality with police and soldiers and guns and all these things. This Gambian country, the police don't carry guns. In terms of standard of living of the people, what, what's the population like in Gambia? The population is 1.8 million, which is less than Jamaica. I know Jamaica to reach 3 million. Right. It's 1.8 million. They speak mainly English. Um, 60, no, not 60, maybe 70 percent of the country is, 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 is Muslim. The rest is divided between, um, Christianity and, and, um, animism. Mm -hmm. Animism is the, is the traditional, um, African religion of, of, of this part of the world, but right up to Mali. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the country is, uh, it, it's very long, but it's not wide. It's about 20 odd miles, 30 odd miles in width. You know, Jamaica is 52 miles wide. Mm -hmm. This country is 20 odd miles in width. But it has a, it's very long. You know, it, 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 it's long. It's very long. It's quite the length of Jamaica. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the money here is, they, they use something in Dallas. And what is it? It's, it's 100 Dallas is 2.5 US dollar. Mm -hmm. Um, but the food is very cheap. So when you look at the, 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 the country, you can see that there's a kind of development taking place. The, the youth look, seem like, oh, Jamaican youth could be standing at a corner, you know, wait for something, I check people for this, I buy this. You know, most of them have things that sell on the road and things that try to get you to buy it. And you have people said we, you know, I beg you on the roadside, you know, when them see a car come up and these things. The, the, the country has benefited from Gaddafi's in, input. The, 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 the president here has been ruling from in the 
1997, and he has gotten a push from Gaddafi. Gaddafi money helped to, to, to push it into a kind of <laughs> quick development. Mm -hmm. So anywhere you go, you say buildings and things going up. But when I ask the U.M., <coughs> sorry, mm -hmm. when I ask the U.M. what they think of the president, they say the only thing that they find with him is that he does not allow dissent. In, in, in other words, there's not, there's not a very strong freedom of speech here. It's not like Jamaica where we can come on the radio and talk anything. In, 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 in Gambia, you can't talk anything against the government. Mm -hmm. You know, you're liable to go to jail. You know, that is what they said. But they say that he's, he's, he's okay, he's doing a nice job, he's, he's trying to develop the country. Before he came, the president before, they had one university which was built by a British. Now they have a hundred schools, they're building universities, you know, and open up the country to development and thing. And that, that is really what's happening here. That, that, that is mm -hmm. something. I am still, looking in the newspapers, talking to people that is not me government members and things to say their reaction. But apparently the people them the people them seem to like him, you know, the people them seem to like him. The thing that is is is, is okay, you know? Tell me now, they recently yes. discovered oil in, in, in Gambia. In Gambia. Right. And I know uh, I know okay. some foreign foreign developers and foreign oil companies came okay. here. But what they were mm. offering him, he told them to leave his country quickly. Um, <laughs> yes, he told, made it quite clear <coughs> that it's better the oil stay in the ground than to give it away. Than than them take it. Yes. It yeah. seems to be a, a pan African in, in some ways or another. It seems to be ushering in a kind of pan Africanism that the former president of Senegal. I, I don't know if you know, but the former president of Senegal, before this president. Yeah, president, 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 Senegal, president was, Wadi. Yes. President Wadi. Yeah, he was very Pan-African. Very you know. Pan-African, yes. He, he built this statue, this, this statue of the black family mm -hmm. that looks like the, the Statue of Liberty with a male, female, and a little child in the man's hand. And this statue, it's so big that you can go into the statue and you have restaurants and bars and plazas inside of the statue. You know, and he, he, he himself was a very strong Pan Africanist. A lot of the when when the Asians got the flood out, he was offering the Asians um to repatriate to Senegal. Yes. Well this 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 president now seems to be a very nationalistic Gambian national and very kind of African minded. So when you talk about the oil now, that is something that, eh? Yes. Yes. Hello? Yes, I'm hearing you, man. We're yes. hearing you. Yes. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. When you talk about the oil, I, I don't, I don't know about the oil, but I have read when I was when I'm outside and country. I read about him and the oil and the the, the investors. I think what is going for is is African investors and European investors that was not colonial um, colonial people in the country. Because, mm -hmm. you know, Gambia is part of Senegal. You know, it, it, it's all one part is English, the Gambian side is English, and the, the Senegalese part is French. But it, it's one people, it's the same people, it's the Mandinka and, and the, 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 the Fulani, all of them coming from Mali came down into to, to Senegal and the, 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 the British come, the French come, divide the country. So now they are trying to find back themselves and trying to use this festival to make, to forge a link between the diaspora and Gambia. So this is the outcome of it where we have played a great role in it because ever since they have having it, they, they have been bringing Jamaican um, Jamaican um, artists to take part in it. Um, El Elomat, um, the sister named Olomate, that's what she mm -hmm. named her. Yeah. I tell her name probably. Yeah. Anyway, she got the second highest award a Gambian citizen could get at a function because she was able from ever since to bring a lot of Jamaicans and other people from America into the country. 
So she was awarded that. She, 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 it was very good to sit there and say I'm taking this, this award. So that, that is something was very good, you know? Very proud of. Very proud of. All right, just before we move off, as you mentioned, Senegal, and you went over there and so on. Um, so in terms of the change of government in Senegal, is it that they have a reactionary government now that is not as pro-Pan-African as President Wadi was? Yeah, yeah, it's not, yeah, that, that, I don't know if he's, well, he's not, he's not as active mm. in the Pan-Africanist movement as the president before. You know, you can, you can feel that. I wasn't there long enough, but you can feel that. One of my main trusts to, to, into Senegal was to, to go among the bypass. You know, a lot of people don't understand about the bypass. They never hear about the bypass. But it's a group of people who, they are Muslims, but they are very unorthodox Muslims. They are kind of super Muslim. They are like, they are like what the bubble shanty is to Judeo Christianity. Where they use Judeo Christianity to create a, 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 a environment of liberation from like you know, from England, they are doing it from Arab, the Arab influence of Islam. So their leader, Sheikh Ante, their, Sheikh Ante, their, um, Sheikh Ante Bamba, is the spiritual leader. And what they, they look exactly like Rasta. They are locked, they have their own kind of clothes, and them were barefoot. And that was really the reaction to me with them, because over the years they thought that I was a barbarian. You know, do we, the, how, how I look. Mm -hmm. So I got the, I got to get into that and sit down with them, read with them, just speak about the, 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 the their belief system, their understanding of, they don't pray five times a day, just like the Muslims, they, they, they don't do that. They create their own kind of condition. And Cuba is the kind of Mecca. It, it, it's their Mecca. They don't travel to, 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 to Arabia. To, to, to visit Mecca every year. They have the own celebration inside of Cuba. And mm -hmm. that, that was my main trust. I didn't I didn't get into the, the political affairs of Senegal because I understand and I saw that there is it is totally different from when I came there the first time. The first time when I come there compared to now it's unbelievable. There's a lot of highway buildings going up I mean like you know, I don't know if that is a fear the face of it, but as I said before, I didn't really get into that. I wasn't there long enough to find out what is what, because I was more interested in these bypass. I, I was more interested in that. Great, great. You plan to go up to Ethiopia when you leave Gambia? You know, we can't reach up there, because now, we were supposed to go to Ghana. That was the intention, to go to Ghana next, but the, the Ghana thing was cancelled, because you know, and Kuma, Kwame and Kuma's daughter is supposed, I think she's going to be with Hello? Yes, we're hearing Hello? you. Go ahead. Yes, we're hearing so, you. Kwame and Kuma, Kwame and Kuma's daughter. I think she's a member is, of parliament. She's going to run in the election. Yes. That is what she's here now for. So this was, suppo I was supposed to be going there to, to, to celebrate African liberation there, but it was, it was cancelled. It was postponed really. So the ticket allows me now to go back. So I have to come back to Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Nice. You, you're there, Brother Muta? Hello? It, it cut off? It looked like we lost him there. All right. Well, we certainly, um, <coughs> we, well, well, we certainly got a mouthful, dearie. Yeah. Man, fantastic. You can imagine when him come back now, him really have a whole leap to bring across. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Whoa. We're going to take a little break. We have to take a break you now, and then we will come forward now. We analyze what we hear from Sister Desta and what we hear from Brother Muta. Yes, soon come forward. Yes, I. That is actually singing that song, Sister Queen Simone Banton. You just hear a voice singing Dreamland there a while ago. And um, she's actually in the studio with us. We're honored that we actually have her here in the studio.
Queen Simone Banton. Um, Dreamland, there. Sister Simone, um, welcome, welcome. You're Jamaican, but you're presently sojourning where? In Toronto, Canada. In Toronto, Canada. What prompted you to sing that song, you know, Dreamland? Dreamland. Um, Serbi. Oh, Serbi. <laughs> yes. He's a producer. He is. Oh, no, the producer is actually Jomi Fuller O'Neill yes. from Fuller Sound Studios and Serbi manages Queen Banton. All right. Yes. All right. Um, a lot of people have made that sing that song. Yes. Um, who's the original writer of it, you know? Yes, the original writer and singer is the El Tempos. Mm -hmm. That's an R&B group in, um, in America. And then it was redone by the Whalers. Okay. Bonnie Whalers did the lead on it. And yeah. then Marcia Griffiths yes. made it popular. And here comes Queen Banton All with right. her interpretation. Nice, nice, nice. No, you're a versatile person and that's the singing part of you. Yes. But we really want to go into the... You, you have started with your team a program in Toronto, Canada known as the Unsung Heroes Honors Awards and Celebration. Yes. Unsung Heroes Honors Awards and Celebration. And tell us how did that come about? And in a country like Canada... We're because I presume you're honoring black people. That is correct. Yes, and um, the black population in Canada compared to the overall population, what's the proportion? We're minorities. We're I know. Still, we remain minorities. But what's it like? How much white to white to black overall? What's the, the total The percentage population? would be, I would say, anywhere from twenty twenty five percentage. The black people, of course, twenty yes. twenty five percent of the population of the population of Canada. in Canada, right? Yes. You know, sometimes being a minority in that atmosphere, we actually perform better and get stronger. That is factual. Yes. Yes. You know, because in other words, we have an enemy, mm -hmm. an obvious enemy. Yes. You understand? It's like now Jamaica. Now we make an enemy. <laughs> we have an obvious enemy, so we make enemies. You create your own, right? All right. Yes. But tell us now how this Unsung Heroes Honors Award started, how it came about, and where you are at now. Right. Talk to us about it. Um, since migrating to Toronto in 1993, uh, it, was, it became very obvious to me that racism existed. Living in Jamaica, I didn't feel that. Um, color wasn't a... a any issue, right? Mm. And experiencing that, and uh, over the years, I noticed and observed that the media would always maximize on the negative things that we as black individuals did, and the positive things that we would do, it would make the fifth, seventh, eighth page. Mm -hmm. um, it wouldn't make headlines mm -hmm. in the great, in the grandest scheme of things. So, um, being around the community working with a lot of great community leaders and achievers, mm -hmm. I observed that we have great talents within our race and they needed to be recognized. And not only did they achieve much in terms of education, in terms of owning their own business, but they also had a heart to give back to the community and not expecting anything in return. Mm -hmm. And so therefore that desire was there to say, you know what, why don't we we create an organization that is patriotic and that is clear to the to the vision, the mandate, and just honor them for their service. Create that public recognition for them. And so I looked within the community again and formed the committee with some great, great community leaders. And the first meeting we had, they were excited and they said, let's take it, let's run with it. And we did so in 2011 at the Jamaican Canadian Association. Uh, we honored over 60 persons that first year. Mm -hmm. And of course, Ras Miguel, mm -hmm. you, were, you were our honored guest speaker. And that was just an amazing, an amazing experience for the first year. And we have just been honoring recipients ever since. I noticed last year you honored, there was a 
brother, a Jamaican brother, living in Canada. And he was honored. You remember the brother that he has gone to Africa. I think it was Uganda, where he carried carried out certain water projects there. Yes. T talk to us about that. Yes, uh, yes, that is... Patrick Griffiths, brother yes. Patrick Griffiths, uh, he is an amazing, an amazing contributor to the community of Toronto. He has his own business, Rochelle Clearwater, mm -hmm. and um, ever since starting the business, he is just readily given back to. He has given to back to Bustamante Hospital here. He's ri risen over um, millions of dollars. I don't remember the exact figure right now, and so. He went to... So before we go there, so he has raised funds yes. in Toronto yes. and has made contribution to the Boston Manta Hospital here. Yes, he has. Yes, Beautiful. he has. Uh, yes, so he what's has. his name? Patrick Griffiths. Patrick Griffiths. So people are well, you understand. These are the real heroes, you know. Mm -hmm. But they are unsung because it's not everybody love camera and take picture with them a girl you could check and so on and them come and them thing and thing like when you know to some of them company in Jamaica, I can yes, give some like a two pants. Camera. Yes, and a whole heap of big thing and them make it big thing out of it. Mm -hmm. And here is a brother who has raised millions of dollars. We have never heard about him donating to the to, to the to the Boston Manti Hospital. Yes. I, I met him and I never ever knew until she just mentioned it now. Okay. Because what stood out in my mind was his contribution from the water point of view in Africa. Tell us about that sister. Yes, so he that's his newest project and he started it in twenty twelve and he went there and saw he the, was which country you went? Congo. The Congo. The yeah. Congo yeah. and he he saw the condition of the community how they were living the lack they actually had no access to clean water and he saw how they were living and he came back formed an organization um collaborated with others and says hey we got to do something and so he used the resources that he already had and donated towards that effort again and started once again um Providing, the providing volunteering his time, mm -hmm. the funds, what is needed, and it's been growing ever since. Providing drinking water, drinking for water, the people yes. in a particular part of Congo. Yes, absolutely. And your organization has honored people like those. Yes, those humble mm -hmm. people that that came from Jamaica and did such great work. Um, continue. Tell us more about this. It humble. Mm -hmm. people that, that came from Jamaica and did such great work. Um, continue. Tell us more about this. It has, you started in 20, 2011, you said? Yes. And it has been going now for... for this year is going to be the fourth year. Yes. So we're, we're going to be doing it once again November 9th, mm -hmm. Sunday, November 9th. And um, it's, it's been going great. So we have not only just honored Jamaicans. We have honored persons from St. Kitts and the Nevis. We have, on, we have honored persons from St. Vincent, mm -hmm. a professor, Russ Aishaka, mm -hmm. um, for his outstanding contribution in helping with volunteering his time to teach the heritage, our heritage. And that's one of the most important things as well with the Unsung Heroes is that we want to not only focus, mm -hmm. not only focus on uh, the great achievements as someone as a business person, mm -hmm. um, but also recognize those who are passionate about teaching the young people about their black heritage because it's so it's something to be proud of um we do have a great a vast documentation of where we're coming from and if other hi histories are is great mm -hmm. but we must learn and understand that ours is great as well and mm -hmm. we must be proud of that and we must teach our children that so Russ Aishaka he's a poet he's a teacher of 20 odd years in Toronto and even though he gets paid to teach he donates more of his time in teaching the youth and helping them with getting a higher education so um, we we also honored Brother Dennis. He is from Nigeria, and we honored him in education as well. Uh, he taught in Jamaica, but he's originally from Africa, and he was actually moved to tears 
last year at the award show because just to see that blacks were actually honoring blacks and the it's it's a, it's done in an elegant setting as well so it's not something that we just put together where we just trump up something and just say okay come get your award and go down the award the actual award is valued at over 200 Canadian dollars the award that they take home mm-hmm. and they come home they co- they come to the event in fine style that is valued at 150 dollars but we we don't charge that much for them to come in and we have dignitaries that attend this event and endorse what we're doing as well and the media comes to cover that as well to see the great work that the black community is contributing in Toronto worldwide and international Mm -hmm. I like it because you know that line that you know Marcus Gavin that song which he wrote where he Mm -hmm. says be not quick to take a title from another race. Yes. Take a title from your brother yes. beneath the red, black, yes. and green. Yes. Yes. And I'm glad that you brought that up um, mm-hmm. because I should have said that in the beginning. In, in the beginning, that um, we were motivated by you know the teachings of the Honorable Marcus Garvey, and um, the first year our t- our team our topic focus theme was one God, one aim, one destiny. And last year we went back to that. Like uh, we focused on honoring because of the 50th with Jamaica and Trinidad. Mm-hmm. Uh, we focused on that, but we went right back to his teaching and his movement, the Mm self-reliance and um, being black and proud and also the unity and just knowing where you're coming from and where you're moving towards. And Brother Miguel yes, they are coming out with publications a publication uh, depicting the whole unsung hero and the award award situation. Yes, for our listeners to understand, they have a magazine so each year a magazine comes out with um, pictures and, and so on of some of those who have been honored. I notice you have even honored persons posthumously. Yes. Uh-huh. Two outstanding stalwarts oh, yes. in, the, in the black community. You want to tell us their, these two names and so on oh. and, and, and how come they were honored? Yes. Um, mm-hmm. We honor Dudley Laws. Dudley Laws is a Jamaican, um, the late Honorable Dudley Laws. He was a freedom fighter in England as well as Canada. Mm-hmm. Uh, when the police were just randomly killing black individuals in can in Toronto for no reason they would go in their homes and they shoot them and kill them and there was no one willing to speak out mm-hmm. Dudley Laws was the one that was at them he went to jail num- on numerous occasions in defense of these persons when people were being fired from their jobs wrongfully he and Charles Rose Charles Rose is a lawyer and they worked together they formed the black action defense committee that is still in existence and um, and they fought for freedom for us to have a right within Toronto as well right across Canada right and they donated even when Dudley Laws was sick to you know he got ill he was still traveling to the prisons he was still encouraging the, the young inmates and he was still supporting and helping single mothers that needed whatever legal attention that they needed as well as Charles Roach. Charles Roach is from Trinidad and Tobago but they work together in unison for a lot of things that we can now have access to in Toronto and for that we were grateful of that and we actually wanted to each year we wanted to honor one of them unfortunately they passed away and that was something sad for us because we wanted publicly for them to come and be honored Mm -hmm. but the, the, the family was there and they were still able to be recognized the legacy that they have left with their children is commendable. Right, I noticed you gave them what is called the Milestone yes. Honors um, Award. Yes. Very, very good. And please remember those names, Dudley Laws and Charles Roach, two outstanding brothers who worked tirelessly for the advancement of the black cause in Canada. Um, I noticed on you had a guest speaker last year, I think it was that brilliant 17-year-old from 
Trinidad um, her name we, we Chocolate Ellen. Yes. It, 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 she is amazing young. Girl. She certainly is. Yes. She certainly is. And, and you know, mm -hmm. I got introduced to Chocolate Allen by watching Rebel Salute. Mm -hmm. Give thanks to Tony Rebel. Yes. And um, I just went up and researched about her and was blown away to know that she was on rebel salute she was on rebel salute in 2006 i okay. could be wrong on on the year and um mm -hmm. a young artist and i went online and just researched some more and it was so outstanding to see that at age 12 mm -hmm. she was the ceo of her own company caribbean visions and that's um, so nice yes age uh, 12 age 12 ceo Ex of it you know me exactly you think of ceo you yeah, think of some Big, big red, right. red, red, the top floor of the exactly. army. Exactly. So for no, like a 12 year old can be CEO, Ex man. Exactly. Yes. And exa Yes, indeed. And she fasted. And one of the things too, before she started, she fasted for a few days. It also made the media. And she was fasting for the increase of the crime rate in Trinidad. She was concerned about that. And mm -hmm. right across the Caribbean. And, so the, and that was her mandate. Then she started to tour the Caribbean mm -hmm. and internationally uh, teaching the taking personal so taking personal responsibility for your actions mm -hmm. so stop trying to blame this and this this is why but taking responsibility and so she was indeed appropriate to be the keynote speaker for that year and we contacted her actually we were in communications for like four years because mm -hmm. we met and everything and the appropriate time was that year especially celebrating Trinidad's 50th and Jamaica's 50th and she agreed to attend those in attendance were blown away by her intelligence mm -hmm. the way in which she came across and also her achievements because by that time she came over were at 18 mm -hmm. and she has already you know toured even Jamaica yeah. through many schools yes. and um, promoting and she's just an amazing she's natural cultural empress yes. and beautiful and very she, grounded she, and she was homeschooled yes she was also homeschooled yes, yes. And so, therefore, she had a lot. She had a lot to really present at the awards, and she also received an award, a youth, an, a youth award that year. And we also, we have also, and that's one of the things too that we have been pushing to do is honor youngs. We always like to say negative things about young people like the Christians like to say the generation of vipers and then we always say we're the youths, the youths are doing this and that but we have some great and outstanding young people mm -hmm. that exist within my generation, the generation <laughs> before and so we need to recognize them and so therefore we try our best to do that each year. We honored a 17 year old last year, Akil Johnson mm -hmm. and the work that he has done, even getting involved in politics as well it's just amazing and we just expect greater works from him as a young person absolutely brilliant so brothers and sisters those who just join us those who sleep and wake up <laughs> you're really missing something here and uh, brother Miguel here sitting in for Muta Baruka but I'm certain those who were listening earlier on you'd realize that I'm sitting in at all because brother Muta was so um, overwhelming and ecstatic about some of the things that are taking place in Africa um, and so on. Presently now we are talking to Sister Simone Banton. We started out by playing a song which she made um, she sang um, Dreamland and so on um, but importantly she is one of the founders of the Unsung Heroes Awards in Canada and an awards function where they honor black people who have done outstanding work not only in Canada they have honored, you just mentioned about Chocolate Elaine, this is a little sister in, young sister in from Trinidad who has been honored persons from other countries have been honored persons from Nigeria and Africa but what they have done is highlight some of the outstanding works um, if you mentioned Patrick Griffiths, uh, a Jamaican living in Canada 
who has gone all the way over to the Congo to help solve the water, drinking water problem there and so on. Yes. So, so, so Simone, the, 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 this, this, this can only get big, bigger and better, isn't it? Definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. And um, under your direction, mm -hmm. we, we, we are planning to launch the Unsung Heroes in, in Jamaica in 2016. Yes, that would be nice. I suspect a whole heap in Jamaica, you know. Of course. Whole heap of definitely, definitely. Um, unsung who, when mm -hmm. we honor them now, they'll be made song. There you go. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. And um, I've been doing the research already on our committee, and we have actually pointed out a lot of unsung heroes that live right here in Jamaica. And it's just amazing. It brings tears to your eyes um, to see that there are people that's doing great work in Jamaica, and they're not looking for it. They're not expecting to be on the front page. And also, we're hoping to have the other islands come over. So, Jamaica would be, you know, the headquarters for hosting the Unsung Heroes. And they will be coming over. We have already pointed out persons from St. Vincent, um, Trinidad, and Guyana, Grenada, and the list goes on, that uh, deserves to be recognized. But it is an honor. It, it certainly is an honor to have this awards event be presented here in, in Jamaica, Jamaica in 2016. Wow. Yes. Okay, some good, some good, some yes. good. Nice. Now, can we hear a little more of the dreamland here that Sister Simone did? Yes. And you do MC and all them things that too, don't it? And them have functions up there. I do. I yes. do. The cultural events, though. Yes. <laughs> now, the Unsung Heroes Awards, there's actually a song written by a brethren. Yes. Very good song. In fact, I started the program tonight with that song. Yes. What's the name of the brother who made the song? A visionary, Michael Thompson. Uh-huh. He's yes. from J also? He is, yes. He's yes. from St. Catharines and yes. resides in, in Toronto. Present in Toronto. Presently, yes. I don't know. Could we hear a little of that unsung heroes? Yes. Mama unsung hero. My hero. My unsung hero. Yes, great. You have your theme song, you have your, you know, mm -hmm. and it's such a brilliant song. It is. Recognizing our unsung heroes. Yes, brothers and sisters, absolutely important that we honor those. We honor them. Not for we tell other people, honor our people before we come and say, yes, them great. We must know who is great. We must know who is serving our community. And I notice in your Unsung Heroes Award, you award a lot of people who do community service. Yes, indeed. Um, brothers who, um, musicians who, who teach a lot of our children in Canada, um, black children, to play instruments and so on. I notice that. Um, quite a number of people who do tremendous community work mm -hmm. to help our children in, in Canada. Tell us about some of those people. Some of those that we have honored is um, Sandra Hyman Amon. She was the first black black principal of the um, Afrocentric school in Toronto. And um, we also honored Miss Letna Allen Rowe. Uh, she got the award in arts and entertainment. Miss Letna is uh, an outstanding community activist, uh, business owner of Rapid Remittance, and um, she's a, a cancer survivor. And while she was going through her treatment, 
she started a fundraiser to give back to the cancer hospital in Toronto. And we did a fundraiser again this year. I'm a part of that as well with Marcia Brown. She's also a cancer survivor. And she's now going to be donating funds this year to the cancer hospital in Jamaica. So it's like when, when you look at persons that we have recognized, it's they've deserved to receive this award because they're consistently giving back, even when they're going through their Give own. Per exactly, exactly. And that's the, the greatest gift, you know. Yes, indeed. That, yes, indeed. That, that and selflessness. Yes. That you're thinking of others mm -hmm. rather than just yourself. Than you just yourself. Mm -hmm. And so they deserve. We also honored Ned Blair, a uh, community activist. He got the Dudley Laws Award. He's from Guyana. And um, he's been doing community work for over 45 years and he's still doing it and he's also a, a freedom fighter as well we have honored um, Jimmy Reed he is in arts and entertainment an artist um, he's he just actually had his first album launch at age 70 mm -hmm. in March of this year and um, he has done community work for over 45 years yes. and he's done it without mentioning it he, like whenever there was they had the marches whenever they needed funds for charity for hospitals for community when they had the flood in um, Jamaica yes. the storm he jumped at supporting and sending funds down for that relief and so therefore he deserved to be honored and we recognized him we recognized Luther Brown he is a radio person personality back in Toronto and uh, he is an educator of the music he's also a teacher a principal and he gives us it of his time to volunteering with teachers transitioning into Toronto as well as students that needed help with their education also with artists that needs mentorship and so those are just a few of the persons we have honored um, Shasha K Gale who in about 15 years ago, she had to stand up for fighting for blacks within her school when the prejudice um, was becoming very, very obvious once again. And she fought for some things to be done where that is concerned and we gave her the merit award and we gave Jordan who is uh, Guy from Guyana the award of excellence he's a dub poet and he uses his um, presentations to unify youths uh, against violence as well as giving back to community work absolutely well, brother Miguel, Miguel, yes when you look at all these quality and, and, and in, in all those unsung heroes and the heroes that we have. It is amazing what is holding us back as a race. Wow. In other words, the, you the know, creator has blessed us so much with, with super talents. Oh, yes. White supremacy, why can't tap now? <laughs> it, it, right. But it, it's amazing. It's amazing. We've got to make that quantum leap. Yes. yes. Um, Sister Simo, yes. I don't want to finish. And tell us now, what has been the support like in terms of sponsorship from the black community for this oh. type of, of, of honors awards? The support has been great. But it, we need more, of course, but it has been great, despite, because um, I must say that the initiative that we're doing, we receive a lot of critique from different um, communities, as well as the media. So we have a few media that supports us, but the media at large, uh, there are different reasons to it. And of course, we knew that would have happened mm -hmm. because we are focusing on our own and um, they want to play the race card with it. But that's not what it is. We're just doing this because we want to show love to each other. Yes. And so therefore, the first well, we're year... we're doing is race first. Exactly. And, that's, and, and we are... It's our race first. Exactly. And we will continue... We sure for race. And we will continue to and do then so. And let yeah. them continue to be <laughs> vexed, yes, right? Yes. And and so therefore, last year we got a lot of support from Beautiful. within the black businesses, and you know, and one you of want the to things. Name a few of them who, oh, might, who oh. might have. Because great works ought to be definitely. We have highlighted. Rapid Remittance that um, sponsored Cool Runnings, mm -hmm. Hyundai, um, DJ Records, mm -hmm. um, RS Auto, uh, Doctor Winsome Smith. 
to name a few, Treasure Isles, International, Leggies Catering, Rosie Rose Promotions, and the list goes on, you know? Beautiful. The, yes, and so therefore, we one of the, all, the other things that we do is even the night, the presentation yes. is black. So the singers are black, and mm-hmm. they're, it's done in excellence. The, the keynote speakers are black. <laughs> the presentations is just, you know, the music that we play, like even we, we try to incorporate Peter Touch, no matter where you come from, as long as you're a black man, you're yeah. an African. And, and those, and I must say that it's a family event. We had so much youth last year, it was amazing. And so, it's, it's, it's really encouraging to see that we're able to market and reach all generations for this event, and be able to, and as the brother said, that, you know, what, what is stopping us? And I think that's one of the also the focus is that if we can bring to the forefront that we have great black achievers right leaders um, community givers if we can bring that always forward within your space that's that you can see at all times it reminds you that yes we can work exactly we can achieve we can work together and we can become what marcus garvey spoke about what martin luther king spoke about what rosa parks fought for we have so many great persons that came before us and sacrificed for us to be able to have the privileges today let's not take that for granted right and Mm -hmm. let's try to work hard at edu- like one of the things I um, I look at other races and see like for example the Indians is that from birth they're mm-hmm. teaching them from birth right mm-hmm. and so and other races as well and what I would like for us to do is stop saying leave the children them, them, let them choose their own way right they will still choose their own way but let's teach them from two, three, teach them and says, you know what? Learn about these people. This is what they did. They they were sitting at the back of the bus and they refused. Rosa Parks sat at the front to make a statement and she went mm-hmm. to jail for that and now you can sit at the front. Don't act crazy. Don't do things and don't say things and be something that you're not. You can be your greatness, your royalty, kings and queens. Treat each other like that, right? And so when I address my brothers and sisters it's greetings king greetings queen prince and princesses and honor them and recognize them for the great works that they are doing and focus on that and encourage them where they need help um you must have a strong committee working with you to achieve all of this yes you want to call a few names of your committee Definitely. So let's we get an idea of those who are some of our hard workers. Definitely. The board of directors is Byron Lee mm-hmm. Ellington, Serby, mm-hmm. uh, Gaylin Williams, Errol Mattox, Sharon Campbell, Omar Smith, and on the planning committee we have Janet Lewis, Delroy Wright, Trisha, Trisha Michelle, Conroy Jarvis, Sonia Morris, Glenn Gordon, Mercedes Blackwood, Rudolph Gibbs, Rosanna Sampson, and... Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, Sylvanus Thompson on the Subselection Committee. He's a doctor, Dr. Sylvanus Thompson. Mm-hmm. Dr. Urban Collins, he's a professor at the York University. And Corbina Yafeo, he is a principal there in Toronto. And um, th- this team is just an outstanding team that really works. And we have a combination of members from St. Vincent, from Grenada, from Trinidad, and of course, majority is from Jamaica. Because we are, we're, we're trendsetters. <laughs> <laughs> All right, give thanks, give thanks. So, dear, you hear it from Sister Simone Banton, um, organizer, founder, leader in, 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 in filling the gap regarding our unsung heroes, not just in Canada, but also in the Caribbean, in Africa, and so on. Now, we don't want this program to finish and we don't open the phone lines. So, please, you can call in 974-5051-974-5079-974-5043-618-0352. And if you're calling from out of town, 1-888-991-4152. So, if we 
Um, yes. It will be secure. I hope you will not worry no more. With Jaloma, no, your days will be secure. Laza Current, strong black woman. That one is dedicated to you, sister um, Simone. Uh, Laza Current, he made his name in Canada. You, 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 you know of him? Yes, I do. Yes, so it's yes. most appropriate song coming from a brother Thank who you. made his name in Canada. Strong Black Woman, that's the title of that song from Laza Current. Um, greetings and blessings, yes, we have some callers on the line. Greetings. Morning, Mr. Lord. Blessings, my brother, give thanks, yes? Yes, sir. Um, I'm happy that I have the chance to speak to you as I see you as someone of influence within the Rastafarian communi commu community. Um, I am concerned, and as you are speaking of heroes, my hero, uh -huh. um, Marcus Garvey, I think a, a coup of sorts was pulled off when by a, a government when um, they decided to 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 place the uh, Marcus Garvey's teaching on the curriculum of schools. But what they have effectively done is basically to bury because the members of the Rastafarian community who were mainly the ones championing or pushing for that to be done felt um, satisfied and there was a big launch about it. But speaking as someone within the sector of education, are you aware of the state of that, um, of Garvey's teaching on the curriculum now, what exists out there on the ground in schools? Well, the little I know, and which is something that um, we are pushing, and I even spoke to Julius Garvey about it, yes. in that you can't, persons can't teach something that they don't know. My God, sir. Thank and therefore, we need to start... Um, Before you start, start to inter interrupt, start, yeah, go ahead. not just that they don't know, that many don't accept and believe in. Mm -hmm. Because, yes. like I said, many of the persons, and I'm speaking with first hand knowledge, mm -hmm. who are assigned to take on this, this area, they are not interested in it. They, are not, they don't believe in it. You understand? Yes. They cannot deliver it. Yes, and we need to get in, our, at, in the teachers' colleges and so on. Um, you know, that the teachers themselves must read, study, understand Marcus Garvey. The other thing too, you cannot teach Garvey and Garveyism yes. in a vacuum. Thank you. you. You need to teach the spaces around that. For example, you need to teach about the great kingdoms of Africa. The kingdoms yeah. of Songhai, the kingdoms yeah. of Ghana, the kingdoms of Ethiopia, yeah. the kingdoms yeah. of Mona Patata. You, you need to teach those background. That's how you start. Because those are inspiration to Garvey. To, all right, definitely. Um, and, 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 and therefore, Garvey you now will have meaning when the yeah. children have that, or the teachers themselves have yeah. that overall picture of yeah. the greatness of the black achievements and, and, yeah. and the black kingdoms. Because I was privy to the, the guide that was published. Glossy, pretty, but the substance within it. I don't think it was really hitting home, like you said, because it, it, the, the background to it, right? And many of the fundamental things that should be coming out, I don't get the, I didn't get the impression that any great emphasis, any great thought went into creating. Uh, 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 a guide for, for the, the practitioner, the teacher to use the university. I agree with you, it was weak. Very weak. And and Garvey, you can't teach Garvey just by regurgitating words. Not at all. You, must, at all. you must put it in the context, yes. uh, allow people to analyze it, yes. um, distill it, and how to bring it across. You yes. know, but, why, but why would an Edgar Hoover yes, 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 make yes. Garvey, the yes. central focus yes, of the but, FBI. Yes, but don't go that's what you. That's what you need to teach, the and then you realize the effect he had in a in a big country like yes. like you said, the entire North America that they yes. felt they had to have a particular Garvey program yes. to to get rid of him. 
Yes, but but don't even go that far, sir. Local interest here mm-hmm. were determined to take him down through whatever means. Yes. Because they saw the danger, the threat that he presented in, in enlightening a, a set of a race of people. Right? So it, I, I think the Rastafarian community at this point, or pe- people who call it confidence of Gabia, it, mm-hmm. should probably ask that the ministry repackage this thing and, and, and come with something interactive that the public can access online through libraries um, in the interim. And I, I go further. A school like um, Hale Selassie in Kingston, the Rastafarian community must seek now to elevate that school to where Campion is and better. And you, it requires fundamental shifts. But this can be done. And this should be a place of excellence to teach people about Garveyism, um, Africa, and so on, enlighten our people. You are absolutely correct, my brother. Thanks a lot here. We're going well now, but I really and all the best. And congratulations to the sister who is there on her good work. Give thanks, my brother. Blessings. Okay. Nice. One love. Yes. Give thanks for that call. Um, you see, Brother Ike, you can't just take Garvey and say you're teaching Garvey. And born at St. Anne's Bay, 1887. He died in London. Such as basic, basic things are teaching. But it goes back to the same thing what we say, you know, mm-hmm. at the beginning of the philosophy. The philosophy, the philosophy, what he was preaching, created the system. Created a uh, system, create a, 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 a thing against him. I wanted to get him out. Um, all of that it come back to the same Rastafari teaching. We were professing black theology and back to Africa, just like Garvey. And the system came down and Rastafari, same thing came down and Garvey. So we can understand the root of the, the root of the mentality, the root of why we are being prosecuted in, 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 in the Western hemisphere here. Absolutely. We have another call here, my brother. Yes. Greetings and blessings. Hello? Yes, greetings. Greetings. Yes. Miguel. Yes, my brother. Um, in terms of what the British are saying about King Gavin School, we, we, have, we, have, we have a setting in the school that we won't be able to. When everything is set there by the colonial masters, there is, there is only a little there that can be said no. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We are in the ministry that 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 set above us. There, no, they are not. They are not agitating for us to have a strong voice. So it's only the people like you yourself and and the rest of our community will no need to press on in this area for us to get Gavi to teach to the highest height. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, because then. Um, I've seen in school here there are more um, Christian teachers in school than Rastafari you know so they are of their highest level in, in, in teaching um, um, what they, the Bakra Master already laid up mm-hmm. yes yes my brother I don't have the phone we, we seem to have lost you but give thanks, I, th- I think, yes, give thanks, I think you have made the point, um, he's making the point, Sister Simone, yes. of, of um, the influence of the colonialism and uh, certain aspects of Christianity makes it difficult in such, it, it's, it's like you're going now to plant seeds on, on, on a soil which is so stony, you could have plow, you could have water, it's difficult. So I think that's the point he's making and so on. How, how is it like in Canada? It's a teach Garvey in schools and so on. How you, how you see it? Uh, it's also difficult. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, um, it's challenging because they want to teach the history of Canada as mm-hmm. opposed to... Um, we have always said that they gave us the shortest month out of the year, which is February for Black History Month. How disrespectful. Um, and we subbed it. And also, they have inserted other things within Black History Month, like Valentine's Day. And so it crowds the ability and being able to 
promote our history and teach our history in excellence and proudness. And so some of the history is sugar-coated, and you don't really... And one of the things that um, they, they do, especially with Marcus Garvey, is is focus on the negative as opposed to the positive aspect of Marcus Garvey. And I understand why. Because why would you want to teach black individuals that there was once a man that owned these many things and he was able to um, reach persons right across the world as one black Jamaican man and so therefore why would you want to teach young black individuals this because what will then happen right so it's best to just kind of keep it at a level um, what we are doing now like the Black Action Defense Committee the Canadian African Caribbean Committee and many other organizations in Toronto is that we are working towards that being changed um, we're looking for Black History Month to not only be in February, we are working with principals, black principals that's there within the Toronto School District Board and we are insisting that we have the history being taught and if they don't want to do it, we will create those avenues. We have actually created those avenues and different forums that we'll be able to teach them because it's very important. Absolutely. But I'm again, thanks. Yes. But well, I'm not calling that. But I mean, yeah. you don't find they try to do the same thing. The sentiments that we have for reggae music by inserting reggae month in Black History Month to yeah. crowd up the whole <laughs> thing, man. Crowd up the whole yes. thing, man. That yeah. is just part of the distraction. It, it, it certainly is. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Go ahead, my brother. Greetings and blessings. Yeah, man. Greetings, brother, my God. Yes. Give thanks for calling, my brother. Yeah, man. You know, we, we take garbage from, the, 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 uh, the, from devotion, you know. Mm -hmm. in, 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 in dealing with Garvey, yes. you have to approach it from, from even the devotional aspect, you know. Yes. Poor school life. Yes. You know. Um, you have to change, you, you, you have to insert it from different aspects of the school, you know. Yes. Um, one other thing I did, um, after talking over a, a while about the Jesus teachers, mm -hmm. we just. You know, since obviously some people putting up some white, some white one, they put up some black ones. Mm -hmm. You know, so they, they, they could see that. And without even talking, just digesting those pictures. Mm -hmm. we, 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 we understand that do, that do a whole lot. Yes. Oh, images, you know? image please play a big part, man. Yeah, man, do a whole lot. Like big part. And even, you know, for Anna itself, too, um, as a Rasta. You know, we, we, your fans are increasingly. I have the call up on the one in the schools and te and um, teachers, teachers and students. Mm -hmm. You know, and I must familiarize and I said more with and I, I, I history and culture. Um, for instance, this month um, is the month that gave us um, Robert Asili Rogers, the six of me. Mm -hmm. You know, he was one of the one the first man who pronounced Kavi as God. Mm -hmm. well, what's his name? What are you saying then? Robert Asili Rogers. Oh, Asili yeah. Rogers, yes. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. He wrote the book, um, the, the, Holy the, the Holy Pibi. Yeah, or, or the Black the, the black Man's Bible. Right, right, yes, right, yes, right, yes. right. Yes. Yeah, Chapter man. Seven. Chapter 7 is, is, is for more to Marcus Garvey as the Oh, man. yes. Yes, man. Fantastic. You know. Yes, he really big up Garvey, man. And so that on. Is. And he was born in Anguilla. Right, right, yes. right. And he, he, is one of, he is one of one of the two major shepherds that, that set the foundation for Rastafari. Yes, absolutely. In, in other, one of the prayers that we keep saying is actually comes from the Holy Pibi. Right, the yeah. shepherd's prayer. The shepherd's prayer. Yeah, my brother. Give thanks, man. Yeah, man. Give thanks yes, for the man. sound and um, fully agree with you and, and certainly, you know, we, we, we're going to make sure that, that this thing move forward. Yeah, man, I, I just want to touch another individual. Again, within the whole scheme of things, what, 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 what we think is uh, one must look at carefully, you know. Another individual where, 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 where after that, uh, Ross, when I pay a lot of attention to, is a legend named Claudius Henry. Mm-hmm. You know, um, probably, probably because yeah, he, he, he was involved, you know, the, 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 the trees in charge or whatsoever, but as, as, as Rastafari, you know, he, he is one of, one of those who come up, you know, apart from Leonard Howell, who made a 
economic foundation of Marcus Garvey talk about because after after I'm coming from jail within one year then build an empire mm -hmm. that still stands mm -hmm. as, as as the as, as the best economic structure um for, for Rastafari worldwide you know you can't say that build you can't say everything you have there and I need to you know study those as Rasta and go forward to them glories there you know give thanks we we'll, we'll actually build that economic foundation we can stand yes yes yeah man yes. Yes. give thanks yeah, my man. brother give thanks yeah, nice 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 give thanks to brother it's called two names there Ashley Rogers who, who, who wrote the whole epibi yeah. um, and it had a wide worldwide influence and he also called Claudius Henry yeah. Sister Simone as the brother I was telling you about at Rosalie Avenue not far from where you live in Jamaica here Rosalie Avenue off Walton Park Road Claudius Henry and I was telling you about his son Ronald Henry who had come and they, they wanted to overthrow the government then and so on um, he started the peacemakers movement out there in Toby Abbott's in the in St. Catherine area that's Claudius Henry um, importantly he's, impo he's, he's, he's um, speaking of community economics you know as yes. what stand out more that different from individual yes achievement in economics yes. you know, the community economics is vital for the rastafari yes. movement at this moment in time still you know absolutely you're correct there um brother Ica, and so on now as we move up time really run up it's 151 already nice brother miguel here sitting in for brother muta and so on. So, Brother Aika, you want to thing as we wrap up now and so on? You want to yes, we'd have just like to implore the mm -hmm. community in and around Montego Bay if we, um, support the cars, the, the, the launching of the petition, old petition mm -hmm. um, the continued public education of outrage against an unjust system that um, took place against Rastafari in the 1963, the Carl Gardens at Chesity, our demands for compensation from the government you know mm -hmm. um so tomorrow five o'clock um at the uwi in montego bay western western campus we'll be having that presentation with the panel discussion um and the launching of the petition so each one uh, each one within the vicinity must look out and and be aware that we are gonna we are gonna be coming around jamaica as best as we can to collect as much signatures and to get that kind of support and get that kind of push and impetus to encourage the government to make sure that they recognize that they are done us injustice and it's time that they as a government who is seeking reparation with other Caribbean communi communities must clean up them own backyard same way and, and give us some form of a compensation so it look good for them too. All right? Well Blessed. said. Well Keep said, that. Brother Aika. Yes. Greetings and blessings. We'll take another call before we go. Yes, greetings. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So, uh, uh, and I am um, kind of young in a in, in little black history thing. So, mm -hmm. I, I just uh, try to, to learn more about it. So, if, if I want, where would be the, the great, where would be the best part to start in terms of learning um, black history? <laughs> Buy the books and read. We have a bookstore at 75 East Street, downtown, Head Start Books. Buy the books and read, my brother. If you buy one book every month, your knowledge grow. And the other aspect which I encourage is reasoning. Having read, you must reason with other brothers and sisters. You need to get back to reasoning. Not just sit down and just blah, 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 and talk, boys. Reasoning now. Groundings. Oh, 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 yeah, groundings, as, as Brother Ica put it. You know, you analyze certain things that you have read, repeat it to other brothers and sisters, hear their views and so on. That's a great place to start. Um, so, 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 some of the books then, what, 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 um, what, what you would suggest I would buy? Um, can I get those at the library? Like, are some of those books at the library? No, the no, a lot of them not at the library. Books, okay. but, uh, any books by Franz Fanon. Remember those names, Franz Fanon. Any book, brilliant. Any book by Shikanta Diop, brilliant. Any book by Chinewezu, 
And, and you know, all these are books that are absolutely brilliant, that you can go a far away in understanding black history, black culture, black greatness, and realize the great things that we have given the world and so on. And there are many other authors. Any of those, anything by Walter Rodney, Groundings with My Brother, How Europe Under Develop Africa, all those are great books. Now, some of them might be in the library, but I myself try to sell the libraries in Jamaica some of these books, and them don't pay me no mind. So, my brother, if you seek, you'll find there's some amount of um, knowledge available on the internet. You have to get into it, but you have to carefully use that internet because somebody put in that information, and not all the while it is we who put it in, and therefore I've seen wrong things on the internet and so on. So, but if you seek, you'll find, and you have bridges where you can sit in with and reason, my brother. You know, that's an area of knowledge that can never be replaced. Give thanks for this call. Very good. Uh, so, so yes, Walter Rodney. And, uh, yes, man. She canted Dio, Franz Fanon, you know, Dr. Benjo Cannon, and, um, uh, you know, um, so many, my brother, that, you know, you start. And like I say, if one book a month you read, you'd be amazed how the knowledge grow and how your mind would move from one level to another level. John Henry uh, Clark, Marcus Garvey. Yes. Mm. Yes. All right. So we're going to wrap up now. We really thank all those who participated in the program. Sister Simone, you want to say any parting greetings before you step? We are honored to have you here in Jamaica. Um, when are you going back? Uh, May 30. All right. So you have a few more days here and so on. Is there another greetings you want um, when are you going back? Uh, May 30. All right. So you have a few more days here and so on. Is there another greetings you want to send out to your family or so? Heal anyone or any sound you want to say just before we wrap up? Uh, yes. So first of all, give thanks to Ari FM for the opportunity and yourself. Thank you, Ras Miguel, uh, to be able to come and just reason for a few. I just want to send greetings to all my aunts in Jamaica, Aunt Rita, Aunt Tina, my grandmother, uh, my father, Adrian, um, my producer and um, business partner, O'Neill Drummy Fuller, a very um, outstanding spiritual musician. You'll be hearing more of him, Fuller Sound International. And just love my brother Kurt, my mother, everybody. I can't call all the names. Just greetings and love to all one and all. And um, check out uh, the Unsung Heroes on www.cacunsungheroes.com. Follow us on Facebook at the Canadian African Caribbean Unsung Heroes Honors. Learn a little bit more about it and just start planning to nominate your Unsung Heroes right here in Jamaica for 2016. Give thanks, blessings, really glad to have you. And you keep up that great work there in Canada because, um, what they say, injustice anywhere yes. is a threat to justice everywhere. Yes. So you do your little bit in Canada, we do ours in Jamaica. The brothers Muta gone over Gambia, gone do his little bit. Sister Desta over in Ethiopia. Yes. We have Brother Seiko over in Chicago. We have our brothers in England all over. Brothers in St. Vincent and everybody do their little bit, mm -hmm. it grow to the big hole and a great crescendo. And as we seal up, there were some points which Sister Desta had made, Brother Iker. She mentioned that this museum, th th this exhibition that they're having, is at a museum where they have the bones of Dinkinish. As you know, the white people call it Lucy. Yes. But we, the original of Ethiopian Dinkinish. Yes. Dinkinish. Yes. And we want our brothers and sisters now to have this exhibition at a museum where the bones of Dinkinish is, is in itself outstanding and a great achievement. Definitely. Because these bones have been scientifically proven to be the oldest human bones presently found on this earth. Yes. And these bones were found in Ethiopia. And it's an African boat. An African woman. Both. Exactly. An African <laughs> woman. It has been tested. It has been proven. These are the oldest bones of any human being found on this earth. And 
And then after that, that's the definition of Bosch and Lucy. You can imagine <laughs> full food name like Lucy. The proper name is Dinkinish. And Sister Desta mentioned it, but she mentioned it in a way that many men might not have heard it and realized the power of what Sister Desta yes, was saying. Yes. Sister Desta also made a brilliant point that they will be having a, a, a video or so showing slavery. Because Ethiopians, like you said, they don't know the transatlantic slavery. No. So when you reason with them about that, they, they're, they're surprised. You give them a conic toss in the diaspora. Definitely. Yes, now yes. they'll understand and how we, we came, came out. out. <laughs> and why it is now that we have returned. And we have returned with such force. Yes. That we have to be teaching them now exactly. that the Almighty look like we. Yes. Yes. You see what I mean? Exactly. So that's a very great, that, that great came out. exhibition. Man. Yes, man, that, 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 that they are having. So this ain't no ordinary exhibition. And of course, Brother Muta raised some very significant points that Gambia has taken itself out of the Commonwealth. And, and because he said it doesn't benefit us, and that the Gambia now is looking to make it possible that um, we as black people should need visa to come mm -hmm. home. Mm -hmm. That is why the AU is so important that if it set up itself in a proper way, you know. So we in the Caribbean can be members of the, of like they said, the sixth region, we can be members of the, of the AU inside of the, the, the Commonwealth. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in no, other no, no, words, no. the Commonwealth reminds us of slavery, of, of colonialism and slavery. Yes. That is how it was set up. <laughs> you the know? Commonwealth was headed by the Queen of England or the King of England, run by Britain and so on. We need to align ourselves with the continent, man, with, with our people. Yes, absolutely. Yes. So, you, the listeners, above all, we give thanks for you. And we thank you for listening. It's an honor for us. We give thanks to Sitin for Brother Muta. And we hope, like we said at the beginning, that at the end of the program, that we will have moved to another level. Thanks for those callers that raised the issue of Marcus Garvey's teachings, that it need to improve. It certainly need to be packaged better and it need to be all around more and that we not accept the way they have done it and feel that that sort of ease us off. Yes. Nice. Yes. Brother Aika, glad you could come. Give thanks, Rastafari. Thank you, Brown and Sister and so we give thanks yes. that you yes. could all come. And we ask the Father's guidance, keep and bless us. The Almighty Aija, Rastafari Aija, Rastafari Aija, Rastafari. Highly I, Selassie I, now and forevermore. Thank <laughs> you.